the Team Canada dressing room, usually the Toronto Maple Leafs dressing room. Tonight, these 22 kids, Curtis Lazar, Nick Patan, his new line mate, and Connor McDavid, who's been sensational, 10 points in his last five. Those are the guys up front. Zach Fucali, the last line of defense, going for gold tonight for Canada, trying to end a five-year drought. Hello, Canada, and welcome to the gold medal game, the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie. It's been a while since Canada's been here. Not really, only four years, but that's an eternity on the Canadian hockey calendar. It was four years ago in Buffalo against Russia. I'll spare you the details. You're about to see it in a second anyway. The point is this. These are the nights that Canadian hockey fans live for. Packed house, red and white, and Canada versus Russia. It's Canada. Russia. Look out! It's a double Dion. Perry for Bergeron scores! Canada is on top of the hockey world. The greatest collapse in the history of the World Junior. And the roof falls in on Canada. Suddenly, there's life. And the epic comeback comes up short. The Chief of the Rook, the Rook, and they score. And the Russians will take the bronze. Russia score. Back to back bronze medals for the Russians. It's amazing, really. During the five-year gold medal run, Canada 4-0 against the Russians, all in big games, three gold medal games, some of them you saw there. And then the last five years when they haven't won gold, 0-4 against the Russians in the medal round. These games have really defined the last decade for Canadian hockey. Oh, the other thing, historically, 11-11-1. So this is pretty much a rubber match, 20 years in the making. Bob McKenzie, what needs to happen for Canada to win tonight? Well, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Zach Fucali needs to be very, very good in net for Team Canada. But Team Canada has the capacity to break this game open with their top two centers. Sam Reinhart between Max Domi and Anthony Duclair. That light has been lights out. Connor McDavid between Curtis Lazar and Nick Patan on a newly constructed line that was absolutely electrifying last night in the semi-final victory over the Slovaks. McDavid now has 10 points in six World Junior games this year. That's one more point than what Sidney Crosby had in his draft here when he had nine points in the same number of games, six. So Connor McDavid and Sam Reinhardt and those top two offensive lines for Team Canada have the capacity to break this game wide open. Russia looked formidable against Sweden yesterday. What specific challenge do they pose for Canada? Well, they're a big team, and they are also a team that historically, as you saw from the examples, Canada's kryptonite over the last four or five years. This team is big, they are strong, they do have balance and depth, they box people out well in front of the net, they're dangerous off the rush, they've got a pretty good power play, and they've got this guy, Valerie Bragan, he's got some swagger. This was the coach in, Can in Buffalo when the Russians had that amazing comeback against Team Canada, and this team has the swagger to go with it. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. That's one thing we have not seen Benoit Gru do so far, is stand on the top of the bench to address his team. Pretty much every little move he's made so far has been good. He's standing by the Team Canada coach with Ryan. Benoit, one of the things your players have consistently said through the tournament is that you do a great job of setting the tone for the team. Serious when it needs to be, loose when it needs to be. What tone do you want to set for them tonight? Well, obviously, since day one, we want to be loose but focus, And I think it's something we've been doing very well, so we don't want to change anything for tonight. What have you sensed with this team's ability to monitor itself in that regard, your leaders on down? Well, I think it, it starts from the leadership uh, in within. No doubt that uh, our older guys, like the, the guys with uh, the most experience, are, are leading the way and they know exactly uh, what we want from them and uh, I think they're leading by example. To Russia, they have a, a defense that is big, they like to stand up. What do you want to see from your forwards? What's the best way to combat that? Well. The most important thing for us is to have support uh, through middle of the ice. We want to use our speed uh, from the side, but to use our speed, we need support from middle and play deep in their zone. So uh, to, in order to bring uh, the puck 
to the point and create chaos in front of their net. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. Thanks, Benoit. Thanks. His team not only 6-0, and but they have never trailed in the tournament. In fact, they've never been tied, only at 0-0. Russians only blemish a loss to Sweden in the preliminary round, which they avenged yesterday. The game is next. The 2015 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship is brought to you by RBC. Proud to support hockey in Canada to help more kids reach their someday. By Imperial Oil. The Esso brand is a proud sponsor of Hockey Canada and the World Junior Hockey Championship. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey teams. And by TELUS, the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game. The 2015 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads by Molson Canadian, anything for hockey, and by Canadian Tire Jumpstart Charities, giving kids a sporting chance. Starting goaltenders brought to you by Chevrolet, find new roads, Vitaly's 971 save percentage, best in the tournament. Chess Yorkin's numbers also solid. This is TSN's 25th year of bringing you the World Juniors. We could not think of a better way to celebrate than this. Canada, Russia for gold. Enjoy.
Number 12, going to be with Dues, Alexander Fritzev. At forward, coming back down, number 19, going to be with C-Step, Pavel Buchnevich. Number 22, going to be with Victor, Ivan Barbashev. And number 27, going to be with Vincent, Vyacheslav Lashenko. And starting for Canada. Number six, Nadeo Sis, Shay Theodore. And number 25, Nadeo Vincent, Darnell Nurse. And four, Kamataka, number 10, Nadeo Sis, Anthony Duclair. Number 16, Nadeo Sais, Max Doe. The game officials for this game have been licensed and assigned by the International Ice Hockey Federation. This is the CSI that has been licensed and assigned by the International Ice Hockey Federation. This is the Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the final game of the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship. This tournament went to a medal round format 20 years ago, and since then, this is the eighth gold medal game meeting between Canada and Russia. Behind the bench. 14 Canada is Benoit Grew, the head coach of Gatineau, the Quebec Major Junior League, his 12th year as their head coach and now also their general manager. Valery Bragan coached the Russians to gold in 2011 and Buffalo Silver in Calgary in 2012. He was an assistant for the Russians in Grand Forks, North Dakota in 2005. Two experienced referees. Marcus Vinterborg of Sweden has worked six world championships, two Olympic games. Tobias Verley of Switzerland. Five world championships and an under-18 gold medal game. They're both officials in the Swiss National A League. What more could you ask for? A packed house. Two long-time rivals. The two teams at the start of the tournament that most people thought would be in this position. It almost vibrates here, Gord. The both, both teams came back to the bench. The enthusiasm ready to just explode out of these players. Puts Navich and Domir into it before the face-off. And on the other side, Duclair and Lashenko. Here we go, right up. Wins the draw back to Shea Theodore. Darnell Nurse ahead for Domi. And back to pick it up is Alexander Princess. Lined up there by Reinhardt. Duclair picks it up in behind the goal. Anthony Duclair. Drives him. Get it down to Domi. He does. Domi centers and Duclair scores! Anthony Duclair! 23 seconds in. Canada has a 1-0 lead. Oh, shoving on both ends, Duclair and Domi. The referees separate them. They chip the puck into the zone. Reinhardt gets in on the forecheck. Duclair knocks the puck down, and once he stays on the puck, here's the key. He stays on it. He keeps the puck alive. And then Domi, an excellent passer, is going to find Duclair. Duclair missed a couple of open net scored in the corners. He gets a lucky one that bounces off the goaltender in the semis. And he puts Canada on the board here, 23 seconds in. Shades of Grand Forks in 2005. When Canada scored in the opening moments of the game and route to a gold medal win. Bowie up ahead for Lazar that's broken up by Nikita Cherepanov. Across he goes to the captain, Vladislav Gavrikov. That's knocked down by Patan. Nick Patan playing the wing with Connor McDavid and Curtis Lazar. And now Patan. Taps it back for Josh Morrissey, two Winnipeg Jets prospects. And back at the point, Uden tries to bank it off the end boards, hits the back of the net. And Kashenko with it in the corner, got tied up there by Morrissey. Back at the point is Uden with it. Has time and shoots and bounces down in front, in front of Fakali, a broken stick now for McDavid. And Lazar has the loose puck. 
He hammers Hume as he plays it in deep. Icing was waved off. And now they will call play. The linesman did call it dead. You couldn't hear over the crowd. But it will be an icing call against Canada. And the face-off back in the Canadian zone. The key to this whole goal is Duclair staying on the puck here. In the puck battle with two Russian players, he keeps it alive to Domi. That's a small passing window for Max Domi. He slides it right on the tape to Duclair. Duclair doesn't hold on to it, makes it one nothing, and there's Pagan jumping up on Lazar. Now Brian might nip Richie along with Frederick Goche. Richie tries to pull it around a unit. Goche with it. Loose behind the rushing goal. Frederick Goche bangs it back to Dylan Hetherington. Hetherington shoots. That was blocked and it's chopped out by Dragacha. has it now. Ahead for Kraus. Lawson Kraus. He and Connor McDavid, the only two draft-eligible players in this Canadian lineup. Shipped in by Ritchie down to the Russian zone. Ivan Provolon plays for Grandin in the Western Hockey League. The top-scoring rookie in the Western League. And he left for the Russian camp. Long lead pass. Here's Goldobin with it. Long shot handled by Fukali. And Morris, he banks it ahead to Braden Point. Out for Nick Paul, that's through his feet, and back out to center right. Renat Valia plays for Kootenai in the Western Hockey League. Shot it in, and Jake Vertanen has it back for Canada. Swings it rink wide for point. In comes Braden Point with Nick Paul, keeping it for Paul scores! Braden Point with a terrific centering pass. Nick Paul taps it home, and Canada leads 2-0. Switch even more dramatically the next year in the semis he did it. And that quick shot taken there by Lashenko kicked away by Fukali. In that game in Calgary, it was 6-1 to one Russia. Canada closing 6-5. Now Domi swings it across. And with five to go, Braga changed goalie. And the Russians hung on to win it 6-5. to five. But now in desperation to make the early switch here in the first period. Domi bats it down. And it comes loose in front for Duclair. Swipes it on goal. Sorokin the save. The rebound skipped away. Sorokin about one goal on 53 shots, as you mentioned, Ray, in the pre-tournament game. Canada outshot the Russians 53 to 20. Darnell Nurse works it in now as Canada changing. Nurse swings it back. Patan shoots. Tip it on goal. Rebound to Clyde off the outside of the net. Patan swings it back in front. Furious pressure by Canada there. And Sorokin hangs in. Now McDavid collides with Ryukvin. Puck in behind McDavid, still loose in front for Kelly down as swatting it down was Vyshenko. Gavrikov with a shot that was blocked. The next shot goes wide, bounces right in front for Mammon. And it's knocked down by Patan. Lazar, rink wide for McDavid. Trying to get on Gavrikov. Gavrikov knocked that away. Now Mammon falls. And Lazar taps it back. Josh Morrissey. Up ahead for McDavid. Leaves it there for Nick Ritchie. Richie banks it around for Lazar. 4-2, the shot's on goal for Canada in a 2-0 lead. And Lazar trying to lift that in. It goes over the glass and out. Anthony Duclair had the first minute goal. He's almost got another one. Sorokin's not even in the game. He's made two fantastic stops. There's an open net that Duclair wedges wide. Look at the rebound. He's battling for position. He hits the outside of the goal post. That's Nick Patan bent over at the bench just to my left. 
He was hit on the far side of the ice. He came back to the bench. It's looked like he's going to throw up on the bench here. He's bent over. Help from the trainer as they're trying to settle down Nick Patan. Now Uden swings it across for Pagan, who scored a huge goal against the Swedes in the semifinal on the power play to make it 2-0. But Cali left that. And Kraus outlets for Hicketts. Top scoring D-man in the Western League. Hicketts drops for Ritchie. And Sorokin makes the stop. And now a battle ensues in front of the Russian goal. And they're finally separated. Ritchie's in there. There you see Patan sitting at the bench. Patan is 19 in red. Oh, he took an elbow right to the face. As Fashenko catches him, but he came back to the bench and was in some discomfort. He looks fine at the bench. Talking to coach, assistant coach Scott Walker now. Canada's had a fantastic start here. Five shots in the first four and a half minutes. And if not for a couple stops from Sorokin, it could be more than the 2-0 lead. Sergei Polchinski brings it in, plays for Sault Ste. Marie of the Ontario League. His pass back missed for Kamenev. Now Polchinski gets it back. Point was taken down. Kovarov centers it, and that shot from Goldobin. Knocked away by Fukali, up and out of play, and more pushing and shoving breaks out as Kamenev is into it. And the officials, Marcus Vinnerborg and Tobias Verley, have their hands full here in the early going. The Russians gain control in the zone, and Kamenev's going to find Goldovin, the San Jose first rounder. Nice stop by Fukali. And it's the position of the rebound up onto the netting that is the key component to that stop as Fukali has had a terrific tournament for Canada. He's faced 72 shots. He's stopped 70 so far in the tournament. Both benches are being worn now by the officials. The real danger becomes in those scrums, whether they just start taking one player out of them to, to lower the temperature. You don't want to give up a penalty because you lose discipline. Reinhardt wins the faceoff back to Declare. Back in 2005, it was Ryan Getzlaff who scored less than a minute in. Reinhardt works it back to Declare, almost tapped that home. Right back the other way by Lashenko. Looks it high in the air, knocked down by Shea Theodore. He and Darnell Nurse out together. And as Barbashev brings it in, the play's offside at the Canadian line. And the linesmen have to come in after every whistle now. And now it's Kuchnevich into it with Domi. After that last scrum board, Benoit Gru, Canada's head coach, was yelling at the official. They're looking for trouble on every whistle. Gru does not yell a lot from at the officials. They feel, at least he feels, that the Russian team is trying to stir the pot between whistles. That last whistle led to the scrum with Fashenko pushing and shoving, and the Russians must be stunned to be down 2-0 so quickly. Trying to get their feet back underneath them here. Long way to go tonight. McDavid jumps it across the line, drops it off. Lazar shoots. Soroka knocks that away. Scooped up by Fashenko. Rick Wagon goes for Mammon. Maxim Mammon works in. Long shot for Kelly, kicked out away. And then Ryukin couldn't reach the rebound. It's in the feet of Patan, who's back out there for Canada. He had it stolen away. And Fischenko drops it back. Where Ryukin shoots with Kelly to stop. And the rebound drops down in front of Lazar, picks it up. And Curtis Lazar outlets for McDavid. Up for Patan, just out of his reach. Now Mammon back the other way with the Russians changing by some time. In on Hetherington. And Hetherington squeezes his space out as Hicketts. Played up to the line, but not out. Now picked up by McDavid for Ritchie. Ritchie spins back. Canada missed him a change. Ritchie shoots. That goes just wide. Sam Moran into the corner for Lawson Krause. Down to Ritchie. Ritchie takes off Pagan. Finds Krause with it. And Lawson Krause down to Ritchie. Goes below the goal line is Frederick Gochi. These big guys go to work for Canada. Ritchie down low with Krause. Morris, he thought about jumping up. Leaves it there for Gochi. Frederick Goche heels back in the corner. Centering pass. Crow shoots a rook in the save. The rebound batted away by the Russians. And back down the ice. It was played with a high stick, but 
Icing waved off, and Morrissey goes back for it. 6-4, Canada with the edge and shots on goal. Paul works in for Bertanen. Jake Bertanen in, shoots, he was at the high and wide. Paul with it. Taps it down to Bertanen, fresh legs coming on the ice for Canada. Here's Nurse with it. Sweeps that to an open wing, it's scooped up by Provorov. Got Kolchinski with him. And it bounces down to the Canadian zone as Kolchinski and Nurse, the teammates in Sault Ste. Marie, come together. Bertanen, his pass. Popped to the Canadian bench and Bertanen sent Canada flying. And again, tempers flare here in Toronto. Anthony DeClaire with the early goal and Canada with a 2-0 lead. At any level, Canada Russia stirs the emotions. This is the eighth all-time gold medal game meeting, the first in 99 in Winnipeg. Artem Chubarov, who later played for Vancouver, scored the golden goal for the Russians on Roberto Luongo in a game in which Canada was badly outplayed and Luongo was brilliant. Rintsev with it, tries to bank that ahead for Butchnevich. His top line is on the ice for the Russians. It rolls down to Bukele, and he'll hang on to it. The Buchnevich line looks like it's matched up here against Sam Reinhardt. Reinhardt excellent on the draw. He'll be taking this draw against Barbashev, the St. Louis draft pick. He was 13 and 5 yesterday, but Reinhardt spins on the forehand to win this one. And Shea Theodore plays it around for Anthony Duclair. Up for Reinhardt, the second overall pick in last summer's National Hockey League draft. Began the year with the Buffalo Sabres in the NHL. Back down to the corner, Theodore. For Domi. Takes a hit, stays on it. And the puck skipped up on him. Still loose in the corner. Domi tries to kick it out. And Lashenko poked it free for a moment. Now played up for Domi. He's got Reinhardt with him. Drops it off for Reinhardt. It swings that rink wide, poking in his nurse. Darnell Nurse with it now. Drops it down to Domi. Max Domi centers it. Goes off a skate and wide. Reinhardt battling for it. And Lashenko goes rink wide to which name it. Which David centers it all alone in front and bounce off the stick of Vyacheslav Lashenko. What a chance for the Russians there. And not even a shot on goal. Now Nurse back with Patan. Darnell Nurse fires. He hammered it wide. And McDavid had it bounce over his head. Lashenko couldn't knock it down. Patan with a head of steam. In comes Nick Patan. Gets broken a move. Works it back. And now Patan. Drops it down to McDavid. McDavid spins off a check. Back down to Patan. Lazar is loose in front. Patan shoots with a sharp angle. Hook and makes the save. And it bounces down to Lashenko. Mammon tried to center that pass, but McDavid stepped into him, and now it's back down to the Canadian zone as Hickens is back to pick it up. Joe Hickens, undrafted last year, signed as a free agent training camp by the Detroit Red Wings. Played in the round for Hetherington. It's back down to the Russian zone. And because Sorokin played it, icing waved off. Alexander Sharov, who scored twice in the semifinals against Sweden, chips it ahead and jumping in is Goloshev. Goloshev's side of the goal, fires it. Bounce off the side of the goal. Shot score! Dmitry Yudin from a sharp angle, and now Sharov comes in on Richie. But Yudin has scored, and the Russians are on the board, down 2-1. to one. Interesting to see if they call a penalty here. Oh, uh, they do. They did call a penalty on Sheriff. That's a stupid penalty for him to take. They just score. They're just back in the game. It's 2-1. The puck comes back to the point. Yudin fires it in. Look at Sheriff. He takes a rushing, a Russian, the Russian player takes a roughing penalty. That's just a terrible, undisciplined, young penalty to take. It's in the net. It's 2-1. Beautiful shot from Yudin after great work by Goloshev. And the Russians don't know. They're celebrating. Look at Yudin. He's celebrating out at center ice. Sherov loses his head. He'll go to the penalty box. And as I said earlier, Gord, the danger becomes the officials start to take out of scrums one player to the box. That will settle down the nonsense there. And That's Yudin a veteran's call by Vinneborg. Little taunt to the Canadian bench with the sweater after the goal. And now Sharov goes off and Canada will go to the power play 9 for 20 in the tournament. 
that was a young percolating now. That's a young guy that lost his head. Canada with the opportunity. They weren't happy with the hit right on the goal as Juden scored. He was pushed into the boards. Save it for another time. You're back in the game. Now they've got a crucial penalty kill. Canada's power play, which has been excellent, has a chance to restore the two-goal lead. And Bowie swings back for the bouncing puck. Patan and Lazar lead Canada with two power play goals apiece. Domi for Duclair. In for Madison Bowie. Works it back in front. Here's Domi with it. Couldn't get a shot away. And Bowie leaves it there for Reinhardt. Back down to Domi. Centers it for Duclair. It skipped away from him. Now Duclair with a puck at his feet. Pokes it back for Theodore. Theodore back for Bowie with time. Shoots. Soroka the save. Rebound loose in front. Domi couldn't get to it. Gergachev battling there with Duclair who wins the fight for the puck. Back now to Theodore. Shoots through traffic. Hits Reinhardt. Sam Reinhardt feeds back for Theodore. Back across to Domi. Domi. Slides it back for Duclair. In for Theodore. Back across for Duclair. A minute to go in the power play. Duclair shoots. And just missed wide. Back down to the Canadian zone it goes as Theodore is back to pick it up. And Cannon will get fresh legs on the ice for the power play. The McDavid line comes on. Patan lost that in the feet of Mammon, who flips it back down to the Canadian zone. Power play goes five straight games, Gord. They have the two units that have great depth. Trouble getting set up here. And now that pass is picked off by Cherapanov, who fires it down to the Canadian zone. 25 seconds to go on the power play. Joe Hicketts with a rolling puck up for Patan. He couldn't handle it. And Kamenev sweeps it back down to the Canadian end. Hicketts. Up ahead for McDavid. Rink wide for Moore. See the pass too far for him. And again, fired down. And Newton stepped on something in the fall. As he's lost, he lost a blade on his skate. It fell out. And Newton has to crawl back to the Russian bench. And the blade is still on the ice. Bertanek. Steam rolls over Sherov, who's back out of the box. Vyshenko works it in. Drops it off for Sherov. Loose in the corner. Point took the puck away from him. Why did Russia dodge one there? Terrible penalty. Excellent penalty kill. Pickett steps into Sherov, looks down to Vyshenko, and Point has it for Canada. Lays it across for Hicketts. 8.15 to go in the first period. Canada with a 2-1 lead. Paul just missed there by Barbashev. And Bertanen begs it back across for Hicketts. Rattles it around the glass and out as Provorov couldn't knock it down. Moved in by McSnavich. Trying to kick it ahead. And now Vertanen bumping there at the line. Provorov works in, waits, he shoots. Rebound! And the puck up in the air. A crease violation being called against Russia. Now Vyshenko gives Darnell Nurse a bump, and there are scrums after every whistle. Canada with a 2-1 lead. You're watching the gold medal game for the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship. Inside the Air Canada Centre, we are honoured to be joined by Prime Minister Stephen Harper. I know you've been able to watch the games on television, but we're right here in the middle of it now. A couple of Canadian goals. What can you say about the atmosphere? You can't beat the atmosphere here. You have to be here to believe it. It's, 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 just, it's just so exciting. You are a noted hockey historian. You love the game. You've written a book. Do you believe that Russia remains Canada's biggest hockey rival? Yeah, I think it probably is. Um, and you know something, you, you never forget, they're a great and a proud hockey nation. And these kids here are never going to quit, so we got to play the whole 60 minutes. You travel the planet talking to world leaders all over. How often is hockey brought up to the Prime Minister of Canada? Uh, it comes up a fair bit. I used to have good chats with uh, now Prime Minister Medvedev of Russia. He's a great hockey fan, really knows his game. But uh, we hope we talk at this one tonight. Sir, thank you so much for taking the time and enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks for having us. Thanks for doing such a great job of this, too. Uh, we're happy to. Gordon? Dylan Hetherington winds and shoots it, bounces down in front. Frederick Gucci with a backhand shot that goes wide. Provorov on it. And Valiev was tied up as Richie comes in, bumping there with Kmenev. Joel Dobin slides out to center ice. In comes Lotensky with it. Little head fake, plays it back to front. Lotensky with a shot. Shut down short side by Fukali. And Goche has it back. Frederick Goche from Ramuski of the Quebec Major Junior League. For Ritchie who fires it down and Canada will change. 
8-7. The shot's on goal in favor of Canada. Under seven to go in a frenetic first period. In comes Sheroff with it back, hands it in front. And Valley couldn't clear it away. Now the centering pass knocked down by Lazar. Up for Patan as McDavid jumps in. Patan for McDavid. The pass too far for him. McDavid knocked down by Cherapanov. And Bowie up for Patan. Nick Patan. Try to feed McDavid. Now Patan gets it right back. In across the line he comes. Nick Patan knocked off stride. At the line. Here's Bowie with a shot. Soroka the save. He knocks that to the corner. <laughs> Patan. Rides it down. McDavid trying to center it out of the reach of Lazar. And Ryukman has it back for the Russians. Knocked off stride by Bowie. Sam Moran back to pick it up. Also plays for Ramuski in the Quebec Junior League. Up for Domi. Max Domi jumps in across the line, gets around to Gatchev. Centers it. Tipped on goal by Reinhardt. And it's cleared away by Fischenko. Racing back is Hickett to pick it up. He lost the puck. Now Goloshev tries to center it, gets it back. Goloshev moves behind the goal. Centers it again and bounces off the stick of Morrison. Goloshev. Works it down for Fischenko. Dragachev with it. Centers it. And Reinhardt knocks that away. Hagan with a long shot. That's wide. And here's Domi with it. And Domi back up to center right to Reinhardt. This line needs a change as Reinhardt brings it in. Drops it off for Duclair. Fires it back in. But the puck goes up in the meshing. And a late call with 5.24 to go in the first period. We spoke in the opening about the way Russia defends the offensive line. They try to squeeze the puck, Patan, to McDavid, and he gets stood up at the blue line. Russia's as aggressive as any team defending that blue line in this tournament. George, you mentioned how frenetic things were at the last break. Benoit Gru was talking to the Canadian team about to relax, to run around, play your positions, settle the game down a little bit. Richie. Brings it around for Lawson. Kraus. Kraus gets loose in the corner with it now. Lays it there for Gauthier. And jumping in is Shea Thiero with it. Pulled by him and a chance now for Butchnevich. Coming back the other way for Russia. Butchnevich. Can't get her own Darnell Nurse. A perfect job defending there by the Edmonton Order first round pick. Valiev being watched there by Gauthier. Two Toronto draft picks battling in the corner. And Gauthier kicking at it. Picked up by Valiev. But Goche got a stick on him to knock it free, and Provorov has it. Knocked out by Buchnevich, and Theodore picks it up. Four and a half to go in the opening period, and Patan chipped that right to center right. Brought in now by Goldobin. He drops it back, and the shot by Dahlia deflected wide. Goldobin back on it. Patan stays with him, and Goldobin. A bump there by Nurse Patan. Again, can't clear it up. Goldobin with it. Flies it across. The centering pass was knocked away by Theodore. And Shea Theodore is away for Canada. In comes Shea Theodore along the wrist shot. That was blocked by Provorov. And Theodore plays it back in deep. And goes back to the blue line. There's McDavid loose behind the goal. Shovels it back in front. The loose puck kicked away by Provorov. Back on his point. Point spins and shoots. He put it wide. And Provorov puts it off the board, but Point kept it alive for the moment for Canada. Now Tolchinsky chips it out. And Josh Morris, he pounds it right back in for Canada. 9-7, the shot's on goal. For Ganchev, up for Mammoth. And Bowie races back for the rolling puck. Can't clear it out for Shenko with it. Centers it onto the stick of Josh Morris. It goes, and Morris, he picks his way ahead. He finds Point. And Point bends it down to the Russian zone. Sheriff Hanov back for it. His clearing attempt was knocked down by Paul. For Tannen. In for Point. Sheriff Hanov took it away from him. The referee got in the way. Sheriff Hanov had his clearing attempt knocked away by Paul. And Nick Paul kicks it neatly. Drops it back in front, but it's knocked away. And played back down to the Canadian zone. Icing waved off. Lead pass goes to Paul. Nick Paul with a long shot. And Sorokin. Well, hang on to that. Bones Captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. Your Home Depot gift card gets you the gift you really want. Let's do this. Nick Paul scored, and that led to the puck for Shishjorkin in the 
Russian net. Ilya Sorokin come in at that point, and Sorokin made two really good saves in the first two minutes. The game was 2-0. The Russians were clearly rattled at the start. His play has given the Russians a chance to get back into it, which they are at 2-1. Dragajev brings it in, drops it back to the trailer. And it's passed wide by Kagan. Now to the open wing, it goes Dragajev, first there for the Russians. It's bumped by Moran, Dragajev lost his stick. And Richie lifts that over the head of Peg and back down the ice. And that will be an icing call against Canada. The faceoff back with 2.27 to go. Nick Richie, Freddie Goche, Lawson Kraus had an excellent game in the semifinal. They're together here. They want to be physical. Kraus and Richie get both together on the hit. The danger you have to have or you have to be careful of is that if you're trying to be so aggressive, you have to watch that weak side D. They ended up, the Russians did with a four on three for a moment as Canada was looking for the big aggressive play in the offensive zone. Go Chase, 65% on faceoffs in the tournament. It's a scramble draw. Played back to the line, that shot fired wide by Rafikov. Still was on the side of the goal for Cali. Lost it for a moment as it ticked off the side of the goal. Puts Navich with it. Lays it down to Barbashev. He's tangled up with Hicketts. And Bruce Davis comes in, Barbashev stays out of it, but Moran has it now on his back and plays it up for Richie, and it just squeezes out across the line. The centering pass knocked down by Moran. Pops it back to Hicketts, he slaps it back out to center ice. And it's blocked back in by Rafikov. Rafikov drops it back, Lashenko with a shot, it goes off a stick. And again, it's over the glass and out, 148 to go in the first period. It'll be a face-off in the Canadian zone. You wonder if both teams will be able to exhale once this period ends a little bit. Funny bounce to the left of Zach Fukali. Bucinavich gets to the puck. Fukali's got to find it. It's on the other side of the net, and the puck, you'll see, goes straight back across. Oof. How close is that? Fortunately, it didn't touch Fukali on the way through. Boltovic. Drops it back, puts a little return pass, Polchinski knocked down hard by Reinhardt. And Reinhardt feeds it ahead to Domi. That's Domi across the line, across the bars, he's jumped in. Now Domi back on it, Reinhardt drifts back to back up Morrissey, the bouncing puck goes in front, and Sorokin has it. Sorokin, a third round pick of the New York Islanders in 2014, replaces Jess Jorkin, the fourth round Ranger pick. He plays in the KHL. His rights were transferred this past week to the Red, the former Red Army team. They're one of the greatest goaltenders in the Soviet Union history. Vladislav Tretiak sitting with former Hockey Canada president Bob Nicholson. Alexander Yakushev is also here as the head of the Russian delegation. Mammon goes back for it, plays it back into his own corner. And Gavrikov back to pick it up. Mammon chips it up to center ice. Ryukman's got it. Walks back in, drops it off with a hard shot taken there by Kuchenko. Knocked away by Fukali. At the line, Cherepanov tries to play it back in. Knocked down by Patan. And Patan finally pokes it out. Final minute of the opening period. Morrissey with it. Canada's changing is Josh Morrissey. Plays it across for McDavid. Back to Morrissey. Morrissey shoots with a sharp angle. Sorokin kicks it away. And the Russians are in business the other way. Sherov with it. Alexander Sherov walks in, and McDavid races back to strip him of the puck. Oh, nifty. Swings it right wide for Duclair. In comes Duclair. Poked it wide, now Duclair feeds it back in front. There was no one there. And Duclair has it knocked right away right. by Dragacha. Really nifty play by Connor McDavid defensively to get it, and then a feathery pass across to Duclair. Golashev winds it across the line, drops it off for Kagan. Can't get a shot away. Duclair picks it up. He's got Domi with it. In comes Duclair for Domi. Final second of the period now. Dolashev. Not got to an open wing. Domi ahead for Reinhardt. Final seconds. Here's Declare bringing it in. Declare breaks it in. Down low. Reinhardt shoots short side. So to save. Reinhardt's hit it at the horn. Domi got a shot away. And again, the players have to be separated. What a first period. Shots 12 9 Canada. A 2 1 lead after one period of the gold medal game at the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship.
Our first intermission with James Duffy and Bob McKenzie is coming up. Jumpstart and the Hockey Canada Foundation have created the Big Play program to get 10,000 kids into hockey each year for the next three years. Canadian Tire had pledged to donate 25 cents to the Big Play every time TSN's Big Play highlights were retweeted during the World Juniors Tournament. But in honour of Canada's amazing efforts and support so far, Canadian Tire will now double its total tournament donation. So get tweeting and retweeting. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie back live from the Air Canada Centre. Well, that was kind of fun. We've seen uh, crazy starts before. In this tournament, Canada's led every game to nothing, but never quite like this, Bob. No, they really set the tone off the bat, and it was very reminiscent of how they started the game against the Americans on New Year's Eve, right off the face-off, trying to send a message that even in international hockey, they want to amp up the intimidation factor a little bit. Duclair gave it to the Americans off the bat. Canada went on to win that hockey game and had a good start. Here's Domi doing his thing to try and get the Russians going. The Russians responding in kind, and 23 Three seconds in, great give and go between Duclair and Domi, with Reinhardt also factoring in there. Just a tremendous start for Team Canada with lots of animosity, and they really liked their start. You had speculated before the game that even though that they may go to Sorokin because he was so good in the pre-tournament game against Canada, and perhaps they should have, but you have to give credit to Valerie Bragan for doing a little Valerie Keenan and calling the timeout and making the change early. Yeah, 2.32 in, they're down 2 nothing. The roof looks like it's going to cave in on the Russians. They put Sorokin in, and he steps up, and he makes some good saves. He reestablishes a little more momentum and then the Russians were able to come back and make something happen and get back into this hockey game. Everything changed after that goal. And it was interesting too, you get a lot of this in junior hockey, going by the bench, taunting a little bit. We'll see if that plays a factor in the emotional level. Number of things here, Canada's zone exits from the defensive zone, sloppy as we've seen them after that goal. Nick Patan playing on the wing, didn't look real comfortable in his own end, trying to break the puck out. He got dinged up a little bit in the neutral zone. The Paul Vertanen and point line was very good in that period. We wondered how they would function with not having a lot of chemistry in this tournament to step it up. And Focali's being very sharp and had to be as that period wore on because the Russians started to take the game away from Canada. Yeah, there's a few minutes in the middle there where the Russians really started to dazzle in the offensive end. But Canada's start, Duclair, and then Paul from point. They have a one-goal lead after one. We continue with intermission number one on TSN right after this. Domi of Water Knights, and this is low half wall retrieve. You just grab a puck and uh, tip it in uh, under the hash marks, and you start on one side and a couple quick turns and uh, with some speed, and you go right to the net and, and finish the shot. This drill is huge because you gotta, gotta have a lot of speed and you gotta be able to protect the puck and, and bring it to the net and, and beat the D and, and try and score the goal. You can use it five on five, you can use it on the power play, so it's, uh, it's used in every, in every aspect of the game. And Max Domi's game-worn sweater currently at $3,400 on the Team Canada eBay auction. You could own a piece of history, bid on game-used sweaters, gloves, helmets from the World Juniors. Proceeds go to the Hockey Canada Foundation and grassroots hockey across Canada. The auction ends January the 7th. Ottawa Senators prospect Nick Paul. His goal, the difference so far, he's with Ryan Rashad. Well, Nick, for a boy from Mississauga, that goal had to feel pretty special for you. Maybe take us through it. Yeah, you know, Point uh, drove down the wing there. I saw him uh, do a quick look, so I knew he was going to throw it to the net. So I uh, drove the net, had my stick on the ice, and went in. Two goals in under three minutes. What sorts of things were you saying on the bench, knowing how much game was left and that Russia was going to be coming? Uh, we just couldn't take it to head there. Uh, we knew there was lots of game left, and they were going to come back hard. So uh, just the game plan was to stick to the same thing we've been always doing and uh, just uh, outwork them every chance we can. They do have some big defensemen. This game has taken a physical tone. How do you ride that line between not taking those penalties but wanting to push back in this game? Yeah, for sure. It's a real aggressive game right now. Uh, try to push back as best we can. we got to stay disciplined because they have a good power play. So we just got to stay out of the scrums right now, uh, stay disciplined, and uh, stay out of the box, the biggest thing. But uh, fight back and, don't sh and show them who's boss. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. 
just an electric atmosphere here at the Air Canada Centre for the drop of the puck and it turned to bonkers quickly with Canada grabbing that early 2-0 lead but the Russians right back in it will take you to the drop of the puck for the second right after this on TSN. First period scoring summary brought to you by Chevrolet. Fine new roads. Domi's first point in Toronto and Duclair gets it started and was probably Canada's best forward throughout the first 20 minutes. Shots 12-9 Canada. To the second we go with Gord Miller and Ray Ferrar. What a first period. Ray was chippy before he even started. Yeah, it didn't take long to see that these teams were going to try and be very physical with each other. The very opening face-off both Duclair and Domi are pushing back and forth off the opening draw and every whistle there seemed to be some of this but it was also during the play Morrissey with an open ice hit Jake Vertanen a couple of times with some reverse hits in the middle of the ice McDavid got thumped once too but maybe where the game will settle down a bit physically it's this penalty by Sheroff after the Russians have made the game two to one both teams will want their players to be physical but to keep it in the context of the whistles and don't be the one player going to the penalty box and putting your team shorthanded. Two veteran referees have their hands full tonight. The teams begin the second period at five on five. There's Lashenko and Duclair again. And Reiner wins the draw back and rolls down to Pacali. And Shea Theodore back to pick it up. Even all the Grove, BC. Up for Darnell Nurse from nearby Hamilton. Domi leaves it there for Reinhardt. Reinhardt sends it up for Duclair. Shoots, he fired it away wide. And now Theodore has to retreat as Brinsev fires that down to the Canadian zone. Butch Navin leaves it there for Barbashev. Lashenko loose behind the Canadian goal. Lashenko has a look back at the point. Brinsev with it. Lots of traffic. Brinsev shoots. Blocked in front. Quick chance of the rebound. Butch Navin backhanded that wide. And Duclair. Pokes it up to center ice. And Nurse Theodore leaves it there for Duclair. Nurse got hit in the mouth here on the follow through of that shot. He's at the Canadian bench. Now a turnover. Barbashev picks it up. Drops it back and Mammon's shot was blocked. Out the other side it goes for Theodore. Bowie now out there with him. And Sam Reinhardt leaves it there for Bowie. A stick was in the way but the official picked it up. And Duclair lifts that in the air but it's knocked down quickly. Brought in by Brinkman Buford. Couldn't get a shot away the first time. Now Bowie with it. And Madison Bowie. Long lead pass for Paul. It's out of his reach. And that'll be an icing call against Canada. Let's join Ryan Rashad. Going along the lines of what you were talking about, about physicality, I spoke with Martin Raymond, the assistant coach at intermission. He said the players need to make better decisions on the four check. The energy has maybe got them making some poor ones. Two guys are chasing after, trying to run the puck carrier he said they need to just go one man in otherwise they're gonna end up with odd man rushes back the other way so they like the energy but it needs to be controlled Sheroff against Reinhardt for the faceoff and Reinhardt wins it cleanly back to Theodore Bowie for declared couldn't clear it out and Pagan with a shot that deflected off a teammate up and out and so Canada will be able to change after the icing call had them hemmed in and now the game settles in a little bit. We've seen this a lot in gold medal games, Ray, over the years. So much emotion in the opening minutes, and then kind of tires guys out, and you settle in a bit. You lose some of your energy with so much of the pushing and shoving between the whistles, but also that initial surge of adrenaline that was very evident from the, from the time the teams came on the ice. Ball sends it in deep. Lazar on the forecheck now. For McDavid with Nick Paul on this line. Back of the line it goes for Bowie. Cross for Morrissey. Josh Morrissey, the backdoor pass, missed McDavid. So let's keep an eye on Nick Patan, who was rattled a little bit in the first period. He also had some trouble getting the puck off the boards. See if Benoit Gru gets him back in the middle of the ice. He was playing the wing, where he doesn't normally play with McDavid and Lazar in that first period. Patan is on the Canadian bench. As Morrissey gains center ice and flips that down. And Sorokin turned that into a bit of an adventure. As the Russians are able to clear it up. And Richie's back to pick it up. Pickett. Through the middle for Gauthier. Tapped in by Krause. And now on it is Richie. 
Gross comes in as well. The pass missed Richie. Provorov can't clear it. He's got Noche all over him. And then Provorov comes back the other way. Pass at the heel of his teammate. As Kamenov couldn't knock it down. Now he fires it down to the Canadian line, but it's picked off by Kraus. In comes Lawson. Kraus with it now. Wraps it around for Richie. Battles it with Provorov. Kamenov hammered by Kraus. Picked up by Richie. Goche comes in on the four check. And Valiev lays it up for Goldoba to an open wing. Kamenev pokes it in for the Russians. Kamenev, Goldoba drops it back, and Tolchinsky with a shot. And he lifted it over the glass and out. It might have hit a Canadian stick on the way it did. And they say the faceoff will be in the Canadian zone. Now they're changing their mind. And a discussion between the linesmen decide where the faceoff will go. Hetherington whiffs on the puck at the blue line. This shot hits Hetherington's foot. Tolchensky's going to get the puck. The third man on the rush. Hetherington's turning around. That deflects up into the netting. So the faceoff will be in the Canadian zone after a little conference. And Theodore with it. Out for Domi. Along with Reinhardt and Duclair. Sam Reinhardt. End of the day as a tournament point leader. Plays it down for Nurse. Here's Domi. Spins it behind the goal. Feeds back for Nurse. Darnell Nurse. Walks across the top, a long shot, drifts wide, and Sorokin had to kick the puck away off the end boards. Now Reinhardt comes in for it. Lashenko up for Barbashev to Butchnevich, and Nurse stays with him, and Nurse hammered down Butchnevich. Theodore in front for Nurse, and he was being checked there, but Nurse poked him ahead for Declare. Rick Whitey goes for Reinhardt, with Vertanen jumping in, Canada in the midst of a change, and Theodore bats it back down to the Russian zone. 13-9, the shot's on goal in favor of Canada. Cherepanov, for Fushenko, chips it in for Mammon. And Mammon just missed Priyukin with that pass. So Patan's back in the middle of the ice here, now with Point and Bertan, and Nick Paul moved up to the Lazar line. Point sent flying by Priyukin. No penalty on the play, and Cherepanov has it. Gavrikov up for Mammon. Flips up to the middle of the ice. Knocked down by Lazar. And Lazar feeds across to Hicken. Joe Hicken, the Gamut BC native for Braden Point. In comes Point to Lazar with a shot. That goes wide. And now Patan has it knocked away from him, but it's swatted down the ice. And it'll be an icing call as Dragachev will have to stay on the ice. Braden Point's the 13th forward on this team. He's had an excellent season in the Western Hockey League with 44 points in 29 games. Had a beautiful assist on Nick Paul's goal in the first period. And here he hooks up with Lazar. Lazar hooks this wide of the net. But really small, really nice small area skills from Curtis Lazar. From Curtis Lazar and Braden Point. It's Point's pass that allows Lazar to get in. He's become a very versatile player for Benoit Gru. The gadget have shown up. Fushenko takes the draw against McDavid, who wins it cleanly. Back to the point for Bowie. Crossy goes to Morrissey with a shot that was blocked by Dragachev. Remember, the Russians need a change. Dragachev shaken up. Trying to fall on the puck, but it's put free by Lazar. And Dragachev just getting to his feet now. McDavid taken down. And Cherepanov has it on the other side. To the line. And the center ice. Briefman knocks it in. The Russians can begin their change. And Morrissey wheels ahead quickly. He passes to McDavid. He's in a roll. Connor McDavid scores! Connor McDavid! 3 1 Canada! What a beautiful heads up play by Josh Morrissey on the Canadian blue line. He goes back. Gordon, as you mentioned, the Russians can start. Change, but watch how slowly they go to the bench and look at that seam up the middle of the ice. It's a beautiful feed from Josh Morrissey. Once the pass is accepted, you're not going to catch Connor McDavid with that breakaway speed smoothly in, wonderfully finished. Canada leads by two again. McDavid with eight points in his last four games in what is quite likely his last game at the World Junior Championship. There's his dad, Brian, mom, and the family looking on from Newmarket, Ontario, just north of Toronto. Playing games at the Air Canada Centre for the first time is Connor McDavid. The quarterfinal match was his first in this arena. 
Valiev back for it, being watched there by Richie. So Canada restores his two-goal lead. And Goche knocks it down for Richie. Backhands it back into the Russian zone. Prover on back for it. And Lawson Krauss in quickly on the four check. Prover on. Slid down ahead, but it's knocked away. Higgins up ahead for Krauss. That pass misfired. Valiev to Goloshev. And Goche steps in front of that. Knocked down by Krauss. Ahead for Richie, but they'll say that was played with a high stick. And play is called at the Russian line. So when the Russian defenders are changing, both of their defensemen go, you see there's nobody in the middle of the ice. They can't get back there to defend that long feed from Morrissey. Head up, beautifully delivered, and McDavid catches it in stride. Quick hands as he delivers the puck so quickly. The McDavid's wave the Canadian flag, and the building erupts for Canada's third goal. McDavid now tied for the tournament point lead with Nick Patan, 11 each. Gatchev was the guy who had time and iced the puck, Ray. And that got them in that pickle where they couldn't get off the ice in time. And the change wound up costing them a goal. And then he got hurt blocking a shot, so they were almost shorthanded again. Now they're really in the scramble, and Morrissey and McDavid take over. Braden Point taps it wide. Point still on it. Works down in the corner for it. Point. Drops it back for Bowie. Hey, hey, hey. Bounce away from Bertan and it's loose in the corner. And now point back with it. Calgary native leaves it there for Bertan. Nick Bertan. Bobbled the puck again, gets it back, and sweeps it ahead for Bertan. Trying to drop it back, it bounces in front of Sorokin. And now point of the four check knocks it away. Here's point back with it. Still working down low. Point leaves it for Bertan. Back at the point is Morrissey with a shot. Sorokin got just a piece of that. And they'll say the puck went up and out. Another good chance for Canada moments after Connor McDavid makes it 3-1. to one. Back in Toronto, the first ever NCAA football national championship playoff game kicks off next Monday. Tune in to Ohio State and Oregon battle for the title at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on TSN. And right off the draw, Domi was reaching for it. Sharapanov swings it ahead. Lashenko has it on his backhand. Top line up for the Russians now is Lashenko trying to get around Shea Theodore. Sharapanov knocks it down at the line. The long wrist shot. And that was knocked away by Theodore in front of Fukali. Anthony Duclair for Darnell Nurse to Sam Reinhardt. Back for Domi. Shot that wide of the goal. Duclair back on it. And Lashenko drops it back for Barbashev. On the centering pass for Lashenko. Missed him. But Theodore banks it off the board, not quite out. And a long shot from Gavrikov went just wide. Here's Domi on it. Domi with Reinhardt. Jumping in. Domi with the shot. Scores! Max Domi! 4-1 Canada! Reinhardt, Duclair, and Domi carry Canada offensively through the first part of the tournament. Then Lazar and McDavid caught fire. Duclair's got one. Domi takes a shot that misses the net. As Reinhardt drives the middle, that gives Max Domi a little time to take it two steps to his right. Domi's fifth of the tournament. Heads up, quick release. And he beats Sorokin on the glove side. And Canada's got a three-goal lead. And now Bragan, who has changed goalies already, calls timeout with 12.38 to go. So Bragan brings them in after Domi brings them to their feet. sure he can be heard over this din but Max Domi the Toronto native grew up in this building and his dad played for Toronto he was always in the family room his favorite player was Max Sundin and so Russia who does not have a shot in this period rings one around the boards Domi's able to catch up to it and the Russian defense is retreating but with Reinhardt going through the middle, that backs up the defender. And Max Domi makes no mistake. And it's 4-1.
Goals two minutes and 14 seconds apart. In comes Fashenko trying to center it. Hunterington stepped into him. Now Fashenko. For Paul. Up to Lazar. So Nick Paul for now is taking that spot with McDavid and Lazar. And it was brought back by Briouf and it lifts it down to the Canadian zone. Higgins goes back for it. Chips it for Hetherington. And Dylan Hetherington winds his way ahead. Hangs it off the boards and back down to the zone. Paul waiting for it. He and Brinsev collide. Lazar kicks at it. And Curtis Lazar. Digging down to the corner along with Paul. The puck moves about four feet. Now Paul kicking at it. Brinsev in on him. And the referee tells him to move and it finally gets kicked out to Provorov. 16-9, the shots for Canada. Provorov through the middle for Sharov. He was poke checked by Krausla. Long shot taken by Sharov. And Fukeli hangs on to it. Close captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. Your Home Depot gift card gets you the gift you really want. Let's do this. Back inside the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, the final game of the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship. Russia got its first shot, 8 minutes and 24 seconds into the period, that long wrist shot by Sharov. Now Rafikov with a shot that pinballs around Goldobin. Waited across for Kochinsky who shot it wide. Goldobin back on it, as Morrissey kicks at it, and plays it neatly for Gochev. Ahead for Richie with Kraus, the centering pass for a streaking Kraus hit escape. And Canada has to tag back up. Rafikov with it. Snaps it through the middle. It's broken up by Kraus. And now back to pick it up is Bowie for Morrissey. Lead pass for Richie. Looks ahead for Kraus jumping in. Here's Goche alone in front. Frederick Goche backhanded line. Goche still looking for his first goal in two World Juniors. And Goldobin taps it back for Kamenda. Up for Goldobin and across the line. Goldobin shoots and Fukali knocks that away with the blocker. Quickly on it is Vertanen. Canada changing as Jake Vertanen brings in. What a move by Vertanen. Steps around Cherapanov. Vertanen centers with Patan shoots. And it's blocked by Cherapanov and sent wide. Now point back with it. Feeds down to Patan. It's all Western League line now. And it knocked away. Goldobin couldn't handle the pass. And Theodore with it, fires it back down to the Russian zone. Gavrikov for Cherapanov, up to Buchnevich. And now gloved and kicked and finally moved by Domi. And we'll call that a hand pass at the line. Lawson Crow stays on the loose puck. He knocks it away from Rafikov, and that's going to allow Goche to come in. He fires it onto the backhand side around Sorokin's leg, wide of the net. Richie, Kraus, and, and Goche have been very good the last couple of games for Canada. They've used their size, they've forechecked well. Both Kraus and Richie with a goal in the tournament. Reinhardt in for the faceoff against Barbashev. And Domi slides it down the Russian zone. Pagan goes back for it, being shadowed there by Domi. Plays it across for Uden, who has the Russian goal. Barbashev with Lashenko in behind the Canadian defense, but Darnell Nurse knocked that down. we got a penalty coming up. It's going against Canada for charging. And the Russians are going to the power play with 9.53 to go in the second period. Domi goes off. Domi's goal gave Canada a 4-1 lead moments ago. He's going to sit for a couple of minutes here on the charge. It's where he leaves his feet that the call is made. It's not so much that he came too far. As soon as he jumps and turns, the official put his arm in the air. So Russia's power play will have a chance to get them back in the game again. Seven power play goals in the tournament. They got one yesterday against Sweden. That was the first goal the Swedes have allowed in the power play in the tournament. Barbashev leads the way for the Russians with two power play goals. He's out there now. Sam Moran on the penalty kill for Canada, poking at it. Tries to fight it free. Goche knocked Barbashev down. And now fed across to Rafikov. Rafikov. For Butchnevich. And Butchnevich. Swings it rink wide. The shot by Uden hammered high and wide. Lazar in his back had a tough play. And Barbashev took it from him. It's loose in front of the shake. Oh, on the backhand shot. Saved by Vitelli. 
they still lose. Here's Rafikov with it. Rafikov takes the return pass from you across to Budnikov. And Budnikov centered it, but the single couldn't reach it. And it's fired down the ice by Moran. Zach Fukali with a big stop early on this Russian power play. Canada's allowed one opposition power play goal in 20 attempts. That was against Team USA. Goldobin drops it back for Valia. Here comes Renat Valia. Plays for Kootenay in the Western Hockey League. Lost it to Hicketts. Hicketts on his backhand as well. Plays it around for Nurse. He's tied up by Goldobin. And now Kroos on his forehand spins and fires it down the ice. Valia centers it. Knocked down by Nurse and he'll fire it back down. 35 seconds to go in this Russian power play. Eight and a half to go in the second period. Valia drops it off for Pagan, who scored that power play goal against the Swedes yesterday. Polchinski in across the line. Bumped there by Nurse. Tickets gets to it. Fires it right off Nurse. And that stung Nurse a little bit. And now the puck loses the guard. Polchinski takes a bump from Nurse. Tickets. Try to pick it free. Goldobin knocked it out. Now Nurse back on it. And the battle ensues for the puck as Lazar falls and banks that back down to the Russian zone in the final seconds of the Domi penalty. Domi steps out of the box. Kishenko. Plays it ahead for Bryukvin. Trying to walk around Bowie. Bryukvin. Hammered by the Canadian defenseman into the corner boards. Reinhardt on it now. Hope free to Claire. Sweeps it ahead for Domi. Knocked away from him. The play remained on side for a moment, but now Reinhardt has it along with Domi. In comes Max Domi along with Sam Reinhardt. Shoots! Scores! Reinhardt with the tip. Canada with the goal, and it's 5-1. to one. Paul and Teresa Reinhardt in the middle of that shot. The boy scores again. All three forwards on this line, Duclair, Domi, Reinhardt with a goal. Reinhardt starts the play, and then back to the middle of the ice. That's where he was when Domi scored. Domi's just shoveling this to the front of the net. There's the deflection from Reinhardt. It squeaks through the pads of Sorokin. And Canada has stretched this out big time. Reinhardt with a point in all seven of Canada's games. Now, at one point, Valeri Bragan looked over to Shestjorkin, who's been pulled from this game, and nodded to him. But they stay with Sorokin in the Russian goal. Now Sorokin back for five goals on 17 shots for Canada. Hetherington with it now. Shoots that wide of the goal. Patan digging for it. And Patan on it. Sherov up for Golashev. Pickett intercepts and lifts it back down to the Russian zone. Here's Point back on it. Braden Point wins that race to the puck. Lays it across for Vertanen. Back to Patan. You squeeze that ahead for Dragachev. And Dragachev works it ahead. Dragachev lost the puck to Vertanen and rings it around the board. Now Sherov back on it. Sherov knocked down by Vertanen. Played across with a shot. Taken Brits up with a drive. Coming in front of the Canadian goal. And the Russians are going back to the power play. Another big night for Max Domi. Syria. Canada shorthanded after Domi's charging penalty. It's for Tannen for boarding. And so Russia trying to find a straw back into this game. That's a chance here on the power play again. Russians had one shot in their first power play. Hetherington off the faceoff win sends it out. Now Goche digging for it. Fired back in, but the Russians have to tag back up. And they're going to call this icing against the Russians as the pass misfired in the faceoff all the way back down to the Russian zone. Quietly, Benoit Grew ended up with Zach Fukali as the goaltender through the medal round. Watch how he follows the puck. His head is right on it. His eyes are right on it. His parents can breathe as the puck is stopped and cleared. But Fukali has done a very quietly done an excellent job for Canada in goal. Lane's a tournament save percentage coming in. Here's Lashenko, rings it around, looking for Barbashev. Which David on it now. And Moran picks it up and squeezes that by Rafikov and back out. 
And Sorokin plays it back. You wonder how seriously Bragan thought about changing goalies again. Buchnevich makes an extra move in the line, stays onside. Buchnevich feeds back to Yute. Yute. Off to Rafikov. And here's Rafikov across the top with it. Works it back. Yute feeds across. Buchnevich drives. So Kelly safe. Barbashev digging for it. Scores. Barbashev a power play goal. And the Russians trail. While well, was Barbashev digging at the rebound, three power play goals in the tournament for Barbashev. The St. Louis Blues second round draft choice is right in front of Fukali. Fukali's looking for the puck, it hits him in the chest, he can't handle it, and it just squeaks through his legs before Joe Hicketts can get to it. It's through the first time Hicketts can't quite get there as Fukali's push pushes it backwards. This will be a great look at it. There's the battle in front. Hicketts has a stick on it. Fukali ends up pushing it back in the net. And Russia makes it 5-2. Barbashev with his third power play goal of the tournament. Plays for Moncton in the Quebec Major Junior League. His third year with that franchise, a second round pick of the St. Louis Blues. He got 22 goals in 29 games in the Quebec League. Next five and a half minutes, vital here for Canada to run this period out as much as they can in the Russian zone, keep their three goal lead. You know how the game starts to feel a little edgy if it gets to two. Still lots of time left. You don't want to let Russia back into it. Patan ahead for point. Valiev sweeps that away, plays it to an open wing. It's picked off by Patan. Sends it down in front. He shot it wide. Now Bowie back with it. Madison Bowie centers it. And just missed for Tannen. Now Patan, his centering pass for point just missed. Bowie plays it back in, but it's picked off by Valiev. Lead pass for Goldobin. In behind Bowie. Two on one for Russia. Goldobin plays it across. They score! And just like that, the Russians are back within two. Tapped home by Tolchinsky, and it's 5-3. 32 seconds. A 5-1 lead becomes 5-3. Madison Bowie jumps up to keep the puck in and then gets beat up the wing. It's a really nice play across to Tolchinsky. Tolchinsky's got four goals in the tournament. He goes right through the legs of Fucali. That's a really nice play by Goldobin. The puck was... Pushed up the boards and that put Bowie in a chasing position. It gave Goldovin a chance to find Sergei Tolchinsky. And it's now 5-3. Domi sweeps it up to center ice. And Hetherington plays it across for Hickens. Chipped in by Domi. Knocked down by Cherapanov. By the way, is not related to the late Alexei Cherepanov, the New York Ranger draft pick, who passed away in the KHL. That centering pass goes in behind the goal. Now Mammon with it. Feeds it back in front. And a quick shot taken there by Fushenko. is stopped by Fukali. Wow, what a time for that stop. Canada breaks down on the cycle as the puck goes back behind the net. is going to be wide open, about 20 feet from the net. And this shot's actually going to hit Fukali right in that throat protector. Right at the base of the mask. Fukali, an aggressive push out of the net to get to the top of the crease. To make the stop. Morrissey, for Krause, he couldn't knock it out. Now Morrissey plays that two line, but again knock out. Cheryl plays it back in. We haven't seen the McDavid-Lazar line in a little bit here. Since prior to the penalty, for sure. And Newton back to pick up the loose puck. It's the Goche line out there now for Canada. And Dergachev with it. Alexander Dergachev plays for St. Petersburg in the KHL. Bumped there by Morris. He loose in the corner now. Dergachev still with it. Wraps it around in front. Back to go to Newton with time. He shoots. And that was blocked by Kraus. Back up to center ice it goes. And a four to go in the second period. And jumping in is Luke Davis. Taken down by Moran. And a penalty coming. A tripping call. To Sam Moran and the Russians are going back to the power play with 3.48 to go in the second period. A pass through the middle of the ice. It's deflected and tipped to the left of Sam Moran who's 
all of a sudden chasing the play. It turns quickly. Now Moran has to attack back. He makes contact with the feet of Buchnevich. And the Russians with their third power play here in the second period. They've got one on the power play. Barbashev is out there now for the face-off won by Reinhardt, and the puck sent down the ice. Butchnevich with it. Across for Rafikov. Three and a half to go in the second period. Lashenko looks back to Barbashev. Rafikov plays it across. Takes the return pass. It skipped off his stick. Now Rafikov racing to it. Rinsev also back at the point. Here's Butchnevich. Try to feed it back. The pass was blocked by Lazar, but David still with it. At the wall, Seal plays it back to Brinsam. Across he goes for Rafikov. Sends it back to the slot. It's fired down the ice by Reinhardt in Canada with Jane. Really good read by Reinhardt. The puck went on the left wall. They were moving it down. They looked to the middle of the ice, and Reinhardt read the play, stole the puck, and cleared it down the ice. Now Rafikov with it. Rushan Rafikov fires it around. Hedrington on it. Bangs it off the glass and back down under a minute to go in this Russian power play. Dahlia. The Toronto third round pick drops it back for Goldobin. Nikolai Goldobin, a San Jose first round pick. Way back for Pagan. Back to Dahlia. Dahlia centers it. Played a cross by Kemenev. Another chance in front. Oh, what a chance in front. Goldobin scores! Nikolai Goldobin pokes it home and it's 5-4. And Vladislav Chechek suddenly sees his team and his nation back in it. This is unbelievable. The puck's going to come down to Tolchinsky on the right side here. He's going across. It stopped once. This goes off of Freddy Goji's shin pad. Goldobin shot is stopped by Zach Fukali. Watch the puck bounce out in the slot and it hits the pad of Goche off the skate of Bowie and in the net. And now it's Benoit Gru's chance to call timeout. So both teams have burned their timeout. Wow. We've seen this before, right? Think about Buffalo in 2011. When the Russians came back from a 3-0 deficit. The next year in 2012 in Calgary, the Russians led 5-1 and then 6-1. Canada got the 6-5. So both Bragan and Drew urging their teams on in a white-knuckle gold medal game here at the World Junior. Nine goals, and the second period's not over yet. Benoit Gru in the timeout was talking to the team about we knew it was a 60-minute game. Keep playing aggressively. They come back out of the timeout with Reinhardt. Three goals in three minutes and 16 seconds for the Russians. We now have the edge in shots, 19-17. to 17. That's chipped by Morrissey. And Fischenko racing in on him. Morrissey went high off the glass, really high. Almost put that out. And Ryukin knocks it back in. Morrissey back for it. Under two to go now in the third period. A second period, rather. And it's played across for Hickens. Not to declare. Chips it to the line, but not out. Fischenko with it. And finally knocked out by Domi. And we haven't seen McDavid for a long time with all the penalties. Duclair knocked that right in the stick of Sheroff. And Duclair comes back to take that away. Reinhardt knocks it out. He's got to get him back on the... Benoit Gru's got to get him back on the ice here. So Lazar hops on, and here comes McDavid to take off Reinhardt. Muted with it. At the line, Theodore plays it there for Lazar. And Uden flips it back down to the Canadian zone. Theodore goes back for it. Shea Theodore with a head of steam. Works his way ahead for McDavid. Carter McDavid in across the line. Post up, has a look. Being watched there by Uden. Lazar comes in as well. And Pagan took it away from him. Pagan just shoveled out the center ice. Final minute now, the second period. Lazar waits for McDavid to get back on side. Here comes Lazar. Feeds it back in front for McDavid. It passes at his feet. And 
Rolishev had it knocked by him by Theodore. The play remains onside. Lazar down to McDavid. Works it back in front. Hook check there by Pagan. Paul back for Theodore. For Nick Paul. Swats it down towards the goal. McDavid had a stick with it. And now Lazar leaves it there for Paul. Theodore holds the line. Feeds it across the nurse. Back in front of Lazar. Taking the shot away. As Golishev got a stick on him. And back goes Theodore for it. 20 seconds to go in the period. Russians are changing. Lead pass for Nurse. In comes Darnell Nurse. He's down the shot. And racing up is Theodore. Chance down for McDavid in the late stages of the period. McDavid works back in front. Backhand shot goes wide. Penalty coming. Could be a penalty shot here. It's played back. And Brinsev is back for it. Time's going to expire here. And what's the call? It's a hook. It's not a penalty shot. The Russians are going to start the third period on the power play. Darnell Nurse gets up in the play and that leaves Reinhardt back. There's the hook as Buchnevich drives the net, gets on the inside of Sam Reinhardt. So Canada will start shorthanded and without their best penalty killing forward in what was a 5-1 lead is now 5-4. Wow. What a gold medal game, and more to come. Our second intermission with Bob McKenzie and James Duffy coming up from a 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship. Well, it's Canada-Russia, and it's been nuts through two periods of play. 5-1 lead, now one for Canada at 5-4 with 20 minutes left to play. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie back with your second intermission. Gordon mentioned it. I just can't get over the wild momentum swings in Canada, Russia. It's like no other series in this world junior or almost any level of hockey we've seen. Well, you go back to Buffalo, Canada, the 3-0 lead. They ended up losing that game 5-3. Can You go back to Calgary in the, that world junior, and Canada was down 6-1 and almost came back to win it, but lost 6-5. And in that period, the unraveling started with penalties. Domi took one. They didn't get scored on on that one, but Vertanen goes to the box, and not long after that, a 5-1 lead becomes 5-2. Continued problems. Madison Bowie jumps up, gets caught. Next thing you know, they come down, it's 5-3. Just like that, great skill off the rush. Sam Moran dives for a puck into the penalty box. And again, another power play goal for the Russians, 5-4. Late in the period, Reinhardt has to take his man down, Buchnevich. Russia starts the third period with a power play for two minutes. Yeah, five goals allowed in the first six games through Canada, now four allowed through two periods in this one. But let's not ignore the first 13 minutes or so, which were very good. Connor McDavid now 11 points in this tournament. Just for comparison, Sidney Crosby at the same age back in Dakota, nine points for the tournament. So he's right there. Uh, getting better every game and really hitting his peak right now. And the big problem here, and that, by the way, is a play that he seldom makes. He rarely goes five hole on a shot. He's been terrific in this tournament, getting better and better all the time. But the problem, as Ray alluded to in that period, he didn't get enough ice time. He's emerging as Canada's top player in this game, but he barely saw any ice time in that second period, in large part because Canada was killing so many penalties. Braden Point also with his best period probably of the tournament, but it is a one-goal lead for Canada. Max Domi with three points, Reinhardt with that goal, even though they credited it to Domi, but the Russians come back late. Rene Fassell, the president of the IHF, next. Brad Bone was my uh, coach growing up. He was my power skating coach, stick handling coach, my Yale Hockey Academy instructor, my spring hockey coach, minor hockey coach. I could just keep on going on. Pretty much in his hockey programs throughout my whole life. Nice play, Rizzy, nice play! I would even go on twice or three times a day when I was younger just to, you know, go on the ice with Brad. Stay on it! Stay on it! Come on. He expects the best out of every guy. Come on, Sharpie. You gotta hit the net there, Sharpie. When I was about three or four years old, he kicked me and my cousin off the ice because we were goofing around a little bit. And ever since then, I knew I had to focus. Hurry up, hurry up. Let's go, let's go. Pace, pace. I'm not gonna let you shoot because you missed the net three times. Huh? 
He treats me a little different than most guys. It's kind of like him as part of his family. It's just really cool. Well, three goals in seven minutes for Canada, followed by three goals in just over three minutes for Russia. And we have a one goal game headed to the third period for gold at the World Juniors. Here's the president of the International Ice Hockey Federation, Rene Fassell. How is this for an advertisement for this tournament? It's just great. I mean, it's a, it's a dream as, as always. You know, Canada playing Russia, Russia playing Canada. It's just great for the hockey fans. What does it say about the increasing competitiveness at the tournament that Slovakia wins its second ever medal, second ever bronze, and Denmark now looks like a credible Pool A team, at least this year? Yeah, it's really good for the tournament, uh, but also here we see that goaltending more and more is, is key in, uh, in a tournament like this. And both teams, they had very good goaltenders. What a moment it was as Slovakia wins bronze and the way the Canadian crowd got behind them really throughout the tournament especially the goaltender Dennis Godla overall attendance will rank amongst the highest ever in this tournament but you did express disappointment with Montreal and the numbers there what would you like to see happen in 2017 when Montreal and Toronto are supposed to co-host it again actually today I had the uh, discussion with the mayor of, uh, of Montreal he called me and and promising me that uh, he will do everything possible to make it better in 2017 so uh, I'm really happy that the mayor calling me and telling me that that they will be better in 2017. So you think both cities st should still co-host? I, I think so. You know, Montreal is still a really, really important city for hockey, as Toronto is. I mean, they are the two most important. And having the, this competition there, that is just great for a hockey fan like I am. It, to be in Montreal, Montreal and Toronto, it's just fantastic. Rene Fassel, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. The president of the International Ice Hockey Federation. We have 20 minutes left. It's been a wild first 40 between Canada and Russia. We'll take one more break, exhale, and get ready for the third. Second period scoring summary brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Two major storylines. The Russian goaltending has been an issue. Canada three goals on five shots in that period. Also the penalties. Two Russian power play goals. And again, a full two-minute power play to start the third with Reinhardt in the box. Gordon Ray, have your call. All right, Ray, we know the Russians are going on the power play. What are we looking for? We have to be very aware of the way the Russian defensemen shoot the puck. Gord, they've got a couple of guys that can absolutely pound it. In the first period, Dmitry Yudin got the Russians on the board with a rocket up over the glove of Zach Fukali. And as much as we've always seen and talked about Russian skill, and they do have plenty of it, it's the way they fire it from the blue line that Canada's going to have to be aware of, in particular on this power play. The chances start there. They're generated there. They've got the one goal by Yudin. This one, the Barbashev shot is, or rebound is a starts with a point shot that Fukali can't handle. And now two minutes on the power play and a chance to tie with Canada's best penalty killer, Sam Reinhardt, in the penalty box. Everything we've asked for from a gold medal game and more. And who knows what's ahead. Going to be Gauthier to take the face off to start the period. Moran and Heathering come to the back end. And Lazar, the other penalty killing forward. Barbashev will run things for the Russians. Along with Tolchinsky. And Wojnevich up front. Rafikov swings it back to Yudin. Brought in by Wojnevich now. He slides it across the line. The puck on the line. Barbashev kept it alive, but now it goes off the skate of Lazar. And back down to the Russian line. And here's your theory, Ray, about power plays to start a period. The Elias Sports Bureau tells us that NHL teams are far less effective when they start the period of the power play than they are in the middle of a period. Newton lost the puck. Goche with it, trying to kick it ahead. And Frederick Goche jumps ahead, but Lazar peeled off on a change. Rafikov for Lashenko to Butchnevich. And the Russians changing as well. Butchnevich rattles that around. Fatale leaves it there. Moran can't clear it out. Now Paul comes in to help out. Back at the point, held by Rafika. Brings it back across to Valia. Valia shoots, that's blocked, and fired down the ice by Nurse. Just for an example, Gord, if this power play had been at the end of the second period with 
the way that the Canadians have given up the three the three goals late you could sense the momentum was so great against them now you just got a new period you've got a one goal lead and look how comfortable they've killed off the first minute and 18 seconds 45 seconds to go on the power play Brought in by Tolchinsky through Kelly. Hangs on to that. Gets a snow shower from Tolchinsky. And Darnell Nurse gives his junior teammate an earful for that. Tolchinsky goes in and gives Fucali a little bit of a face wash as Nurse shoves him out of the way. Gochi now. Against Goldobin for the faceoff. Scramble draw controlled by the Russians. Mammon plays it back and takes the return pass. Mammon. Drops it down to Fischenko. Here's Pagan with it. Down to Fischenko. Two Russians standing in front. Fischenko works in. Centers it. And it's kicked away by Nurse. Valiev. In the corner with it. Fired down the ice by Lazar. 15 seconds to go with the Reinhardt penalty. Lazar might normally not be out there with the penalty to Reinhardt. He's there. He's made two real terrific kills. And here in the first two minutes. Comes in and shoots. And Fucali made the stop. The rebound dropped down. But Fucali's got it. And Sam Reinhardt is about to step out. He's got one second to go in his penalty. So as I mentioned with Reinhardt in the box, Lazar on the penalty kill. He's killed a lot of penalties this year in Ottawa with the Senators. <laughs> Exhale for Sam Reinhardt. Now they're a face-off here that Max Domi will take, and that'll jump Reinhardt back into the play. Against Sherov. And Domi able to scramble the draw. Picked up by Duclair, and Reinhardt joins the rush. In comes Sam Reinhardt. Bobbled it for a moment. Slides it ahead for Duclair. And then Duclair, loose behind the Russian goal. He scored second in this game in the first period. And now Duclair poking at it, it's loose in front. And Sorokin has it for the Russians as Sam Reinhardt was digging for the loose puck. A little zone time is needed for Canada here. Cycle the puck a bit. McDavid, Lazar, and Nick Paul coming back on the ice, as Bob talked about during the intermission, and we talked about late in the second period. Not, an ice, not enough ice time for Connor McDavid as they fell out of the rotation with the penalties. they got to get him back on the ice. This line has been just... Well, Lazar and McDavid have been absolutely electrifying Nick Paul with a first period goal on a pass from Braden Point. Paul kicking in, and he's knocked down by Rafikov. And now Theodore collided with Nurse, but Arnell Nurse plays it back down to the Russian line. Princep across to Rafikov. Knocked down by Theodore. Nurse swings back to pick it up. The puck bouncing down there. And now McDavid to the line, but not out. Rafikov, a bullet shot from Kelly, makes the stop and pounces on the rebound. Lord, this puck drops about a foot on Zach Fukali. He's in excellent position. As it comes back to Rafikov, who can really shoot the puck, he tees this up, and it drops and hits Fukali. Look at that thing dive. Really good stop. Now look how Bowie lifted it off the glass. That was about an inch from going out. Play back to Goldobin. Works in, waits for help, drops it back. The player across for Tolchinsky, trying to send it again. Richie knocked it down. Lifted to the line, but not out. Kamenev with it. Shoots, blocked by Klaus, and the puck comes out. How many hundreds of times do you think Canadian players will be looking at the clock here in the third period? Well, if they do, it's not going to go anywhere. It moves so slowly when you're hoping for it to drain. Richie pokes it ahead. Provorov trying to knock him off the puck. Tolchinsky with it. Brings it back across to Kamenev. And back to Uden. Dimitri Uden slides it ahead. In comes Fischenko with his shot. And Fukeli steers that up and out. Well, time now for Chevy Possibilities. And today we feature Nick Patan. And what an extraordinary World Junior career. He's had 16 points in 13 games coming in at two World Juniors. Number two in Western Hockey League points last year. Big, biggest impact of his career, mom and dad. We saw his dad, Frank, 
after Batan scored his third goal in the semis, come down and throw a hat on the ice. Mammon shoots for penalty save. Bouncing puck goes to Paul. And we'll say that puck was played with a high stick. In the Canadian zone, the faceoff will come back in. Nick, Nick Patan's played a pretty minimal role here since getting hit in the first period. He loses this draw. Quick shot by Mammon. Knocked aside by Joe Hickett. And so Freddy Goche will come on the ice to take this draw to the left of Fucali. And wins it back for Hetherington. Dylan Hetherington pivots back and finds Paul with it. That pass picked off. And now walking across the line is Peryukfit, who fired it after the whistle. Hetherington didn't like that. As the play was called at the Canadian line. If Gauthier is going to be taking the draws in the in the defensive zone, he has to be comfortable staying on the ice. Look, he's heading off the ice. Nick Paul needs him as an outlet in the middle of the ice. So if Gauthier stays on the ice just a bit longer, they can get the puck to the red line, get it in, and then get a change. Rush out, shooting Canada 5-0 here in the third period. Fukali leaves it there for Bowie. Madison Bowie. For Anthony Duclair, banks it ahead for Domi, who chips it down the Russian zone. Gavrikov goes back for it, skates away from Domi. Slides it ahead for Sharov. Rink wide, he goes for Golashev. His centering pass knocked down by Duclair. Bowie picks it up. And Domi hollering for it, rink wide, takes the pass from Reinhardt. Tried to chip it ahead, but the play was going to be offside. Now Domi fires it in. And Canada changes D. Long lead feed to Golashev. And Nurse taps that to the line, but not out. Dragachev with it. Now Dragachev moves behind the Canadian goal. He watched there by Nurse Dragachev. And Nurse collides. McDavid pokes it free. Lazar racing to it. Rafikov got there first. Here's Dragachev pumping again with Nurse. They tangle it behind the goal. Dragachev trying to fish it out. Still on it. He and Nurse battling for 20 seconds down there. Theodore picks it up for Lazar. And play continues as McDavid jumps to the loose puck. Hooks out across the line for Paul. They call it offside at the Russian line. What a battle between Darnell Nurse and Alexander Dragachev. Dragachev has about 10 pounds on Nurse. They're both six foot four, and this battle continues for about 20 seconds. They've separated once. Now right back to it again. Nurse pushing hard on Dragachev, who protects the puck, and then eventually. Nurse is going to drive him into the end boards. That is a puck battle. Goche won that draw so cleanly it chases Hetherington back to the Canadian zone. And Lashenko was watching him. Pickets for Kraus. Back across to Hetherington. Back across to Hicketts. 24-17 now. The shots for Russia. Joe Hicketts picks his way through center ice. Jumps in across the line. Hicketts shoots. Bounces off the end boards. Hicketts gets a chance. Loose it from Turok and down. The puck was loose. Richie couldn't get there. Kraus shoots. That was blocked in front. Racing to it is Gauthier. But the Russians move it up. Barbashev across for Butchnevich. Walking in. Butchnevich with a shot. He fired it wide. Rattles around the boards to Richie. In comes Dick Richie with Lawson Kraus. Richie steaming in. Throws it back in front. That's knocked away by Sorokin. Sit flying. That was Reinhardt. No penalty on the play. Reinhardt jumps in. Shoots. That was blocked by a sprawling unit. Richie shoots from a sharp angle. Sorokin shuts it down. Bodies flying. Pucks to the goal. Lots of chances. Bowie plays it ahead. And now at the line. Bowie has to retreat. Barbashev. Couldn't knock it ahead. Here's Dupler with a chance. Looking in. Dupler waits and shoots. Sorokin makes the save. Galliev turns the rebound. Reinhardt Plays it back down, and Duclair couldn't reach it. Oh, Canada had too many men on the ice. Lord oh. Vertanen jumped on the ice early. He was about 25 feet on the ice. He got back to the bench undetected. Valiev works it across to Goldolden. Drops it back for Kolchensky. Duclair picks it off, can't clear it out. Now bounces off Duclair. He's got Domi with him. In comes Max Domi, and Provorov took that away from him. Provorov. Off ahead for Tolchinsky. He was poke checked by Vertan and gets it right back. Tolchinsky in and shoots it wide. Now back in the way they come. Point in across the line. Drops it off for Vertan. Back for point. That's kicked away. Point. 
Leaves it in the corner for Vertanen. Goldobin lost the puck. Here's Vertanen with it. His pass picked up. And Provorov swings back. Long stretch with whistles here in the third period. Looks David. Up for Mammon. Mammon centers with the pass. Just missed Vyshenko. And point back on it. He was taken down. And Vertanen brings it ahead. Canada changing his jig. Vertanen comes in. He lost the puck. And now for Yukfit. Moves out ahead for Vyshenko. He's tied up by Paul. And Vyshenko has to retreat with Nick Paul all over him. Ritzev. Swings around Paul. Works across the line. McDavid broke it up. And Connor McDavid kicks it ahead. And McDavid forces the turnover. Here's Paul with it. Looking at it deep. And Rafa Goff plays it ahead for Mammon. Maxim Mammon. Hard pass ahead for Golashev. Golashev with a sharp angle, works it back in front and shot it wide. Up the other side, Valiev shoots, tip just wide of the goal again as it skipped through the crease. Morrissey for Lazar. And Curtis Lazar on it. Now back at the point, Princev plays it across. Skipped away from Valiev, the Russians need a change. And that gives Valiev a chance to go ahead to Lazar with McDavid. Canada changing as Lazar brings it in. Curtis Lazar walks in on Princev. Still with it, Lazar buys some time. Fresh legs on the ice now for Canada. Lazar. Sends it right on the stick, though. Off to Shenko. Now Lashenko plays it around. Nurse with a rolling puck in behind the goalie. Bats it across for Theodore. Drugatia battling again with Nurse. And Nurse wins that one easily. Cannon breaks up five wide. Darnell Nurse flips it across for Richie. Can't get it off. Provorov, and now the Russians with a chance back the other way. But Joje Huffle back to break it up. Drugatia fires it down. And here's Hetherington with it. Hetherington failing that pass. A rolling puck now. Bushnevich picks it up. Bushnevich plays it back. Rafikov. Cross to Uden. Uden plays it down low. A chance now for the Russian. Over. To Uden with a shot. Gloved down by Fukali. He couldn't hang on. Joel Dolman loose behind the Canadian goal. The puck rolled on him. Almost five minutes now without a whistle. And played down by Ritchie, but that's going to be an icing call against Canada with 10-18 to go in the third period. So Canada can't call a timeout. They can't make a change. The only fortunate thing for them here is their best face-off man from this side, Frederick Gauthier, is on the ice. You see them all doubled over, trying to catch their breath. It's a big draw here for Gauthier. One cleanly by the Russian. Gavrikov's shot was blocked by Ritchie. Now Canada needs a change. We saw the Russians get hit in for a goal earlier. Now it's flipped out. And that puck will die in the defensive zone. And Canada makes the change as the Reinhardt line comes on. Midway point of the third period. Remember in the second period, you get stuck with the long change like the Russians did. That time Canada was able to easily get to the bench and get their exhausted players off. Sheriff out, plays it ahead for Tuchinsky, works in one on four. Tuchinsky knocked down by Bowen. Here's Morrissey with it ahead for Duclair. With Reinhardt and Domi, three on two. Anthony Duclair across the Domi, sends it back in front. Reinhardt just missed it. Now Duclair drops it down to Domi. Domi works it in, shoots, save made by Sorokin. Rebound, loose it, but Domi can't connect. And picked out now by Fischenko. Up ahead to Tuchinsky, his centering pass. Walking right in, the shot by Rafikov was blocked. Another shot for Kelly makes the save. Loose in front again. Reinhardt knocks it away. And it's picked off by Duclair. The Russians are changing as Duclair comes in. Knocked away from him. Nine to go now. In the third period, Patan swings back. And Patan across to Hicketts. Hickett's trying to play that ahead, knocked away. Hickett gets it right back and plays it back down to the Russian zone. Now you have a cross to Provorov. Fired down to the Canadian zone. It skips back in front. That'll be an icing call against the Russians. 8.38 to go in the third. Provorov was about three feet short of the red line. They call it much tighter in international play. Here's Madison Bowie up to crush Tolchensky with the hit in the open ice. Later in the shift, he had a nice block. 
Canada trying to defend very stoutly here. Maui, good position. That's it for Tolchensky. And here's the block. This is a really dangerous scoring chance as Rafikoff had moved into the, into the slot. And Maui snuffs that one out too. Now the McDavid line is on. Knock ahead for Sherov. Bowie steps into him and back goes Morrissey for it. Morrissey rings it around. And Uden goes back. Icing was waved off. Dimitri Uden. A central part of the drama this afternoon and this evening. As Uden goes back for it. Swings it back for Pagan. Center ice goes right to Lazar. And Curtis Lazar lifts it in. Gets around Pagan. Has a look. Lazar gets in the corner for it. McDavid down there as well. Nick Ritchie on this line now. Coach David in across the line. Look very much an offside of the Canadian line. The crowd hollering about that. Theodore lost the puck. Pagan had it picked off by Theodore. Shay Theodore ahead for McDavid. Puts it ahead for Kraus. Two at one. Nick Ritchie. Nick Ritchie in. Slot, but David knocks it down. And Butch David winds it across the line with Lashenko, poked away from him. And Gucci played that high off the glass, and it bounces into the Canadian bench. What a chance for Lawson. Crouch broken. Makes the stop. Let's check out the Molson Canadian slap shot beer fridge earlier today at Molson Canadian Hockey House at Real Sports. Nathan Sheriff of Talent, where he opened the fridge on his first shot. Won two tickets to the gold medal game and two Team Canada sweaters. What a stop here as Sorokin moves across laterally to deny Lawson Kroos on the 2-1-1. -on Sheriff Panoff plays it back in deep. Hicketts picks it up, being harassed from behind there by Tolchinski. And now Hicketts with it. Joe Hicketts trying to swing that rink wide. Command I've got a stick on it. Kroos had to tip it back. Now Hedrington across to Hicketts. Up ahead for Kraus who chips that down to the Russian zone. Cherapanov goes back for it. Richie got there in on him. And Cherapanov peels back, but Richie stays with it. Kamenev being shadowed there by Duclair. And Kamenev works it back to center ice, slides it ahead. Hedrington tried to knock it down, got it away from Goldobin. And Reinhardt plays that for Duclair. Back ahead for Reinhardt with Domi. Sam Reinhardt feeds Domi. Domi from a sharp angle, put that high. Declare on the rolling puck. Into the corner, Kamenev plays it away. And moved up by Cherapanov as the Russians are changing through the middle they come. In comes Mammon. Back to Mammon, knocked down by Nurse. Oh, well, is he having a third period? Darnell Nurse made a couple really strong defensive plays. Here's Rafikov ahead for Mammon. Now bouncing puck in the slot. Nurse can't clear it out. Brinsev shoots, hit the stick of Braden Point. Mammon loose it behind the Canadian goal, moves to the corner. Theodore steps up on him. And the puck goes to Nurse, to Point. Canada needs a change. Point gains center ice and dumps it in deep. Sorokin has to play it. And Point almost knocked it down. Now Paul does. Nick Paul kicks out of the corner. Point. Plays it in. And Rafikov with it. Sergachev. In across the line, Dragachev trying to step around Hedrington who stays with him. And the puck loose down in the corner. Dragachev kicking at it. Still loose down low. Hicketts poked at it. Paul racing to it. Knocked down by Valier. Set it back in front. The bouncing puck scooped up by Paul. And a head from Batan. He looked ahead for point. The puck dies there as Provorov goes back. Icing waved off and Canada changes. Sherrill. Long drive on for Kelly. We'll hang on to that with exactly five to go here in period number three. The Canadian bench has been remarkably loose here in the third period. A lot of chatter as they try to defend this one goal lead. And there is the trophy. Goche out for the faceoff, so you'll see a lot of Goche for defensive zone draws here in the late stage of the third period. McDavid out there along with Lazar. And it's Barbashev for the Russians. Scrambled face-off, won by Goche, takes down Barbashev. Butch Navich on it now. 
Try to poke that in front, knocked away by Goche, and that goes off a stick. Up and out. Most captioning is brought to you by the Home Depot. Your Home Depot gift card gets you the gift you really want. Let's do this. Because the puck went off a Russian stick, the faceoff comes outside the Canadian line. Now you've got Reinhardt, Duclair, and Domi for Canada. I think we're going to see a lot of Reinhardt here in the last five minutes. This line has been a leaned upon line for Benoit Grew this entire tournament. Reinhardt wins the draw. Domi plays it back for Nurse across the Theodore. To Reinhardt. And now Valiev chased back by Reinhardt. Reinhardt forced him off the puck, jumping into Duclair on it. Anthony Duclair works it back in the corner. Feeds back to the point. Theodore long shot. Sorokin gloves that. And hangs on with 4.33 to go in the third. It's a really clever forecheck here by Sam Reinhardt. He's not going to be able to get to him immediately. So he mirrors Valiev the entire way back. There's no one for Valiev to go. And when he tries to use the net for a defender to cut away from Reinhardt, Reinhardt dives on the other side to steal the puck. Lazar wins the draw. McDavid pokes it back. And now Lazar on it for Paul. Kamenev with it. Up for Tolchinski. And Sergei Tolchinski brings it ahead. Tolchinski throws it back to the slot. That missed. Rafikov shoots. That is Goldobin, his teammate. Now Rafikov back with it. Shoots again. Right on as Vitaly kicks it away. Al Lazar. Works ahead with McDavid. Connor McDavid tries to sweep it ahead. And does down to the Russian corner. Four to go in the third period. And Tolchinski exhausted. Just chips that down to the Canadian zone. Heatherings it to Richie, who sweeps it down to the Russian end. Karapanov with it. Aubrey Uchman. Racing toward his picket, takes a swat at that. And it's chopped out by Goche. Karapanov brings it around. Ryukman racing to it along with Koshenko. Can't knock it out. It's loose in front. Mammon can get a shot away. Goche was being hooked there by Koshenko. And now Higgins has it. Game center ice and sweeps it down. And Canada will change. Mammon with it now. Picked off by Duclair. And Duclair sweeps it in deep. Sarapanov being shadowed there by Reinhardt. And Mammon swings back for it. Maxim Mammon. Plays for CSK Moscow in the KHL. The bouncing puck of the Canadian zone and calmly played ahead by Reinhardt. Three to go in the third. Reinhardt ahead for Domi. He's knocked off the puck by Cherapanov. And Newton plays that down in the Canadian zone. And icing waved off as Morrissey plays it around. Gadget picks it off. Throws it to the slot. Picked off there by Goche. And Frederick Goche has it. Game center ice banks that softly down in the Russian zone. Rick wide is Dragachev. Drops it back for Sharov. In comes Sharov with a chance. Shoots him as fly. Rattles around the boards. Held at the line by Brunson. No. They just squirt it out. And the play's offside. And more pushing and shoving after the whistle as the linesmen intervene. Two and a half minutes left. Really good call by the linesman. He's right on the line, so he knows if the puck is behind him, it's outside. Now remember, both teams have used their timeout. It's Reinhardt to Claren Domi again. Face off one by Barbashev. Grinchev feeds ahead to Butchnevich, being watched by Nurse. Feed on it. Domi couldn't chip it up. Princev shoots that floats wide. Duclair with it. Tied up by Butchnevich. At the line. Rafikov is shot. And it's stopped by Fukali. It'll be interesting to see when Valeri Bragan and the Russians get to their goaltender. As you mentioned, Gord, no timeout to plot strategy. Not yet. Reinhardt against Kamenev. Scramble, draw, put free, fired wide of the goal by Goldobin. Princev races to it. Knocked down by Reinhardt. He's got Lazar with him. Reinhardt. 
Shovels it back in deep. Sorokin leaves it there for Rafikov. Under two to go in the third period. Princess ahead of Tolchinsky. Swing it to the middle to Moldova. Moldova comes diving in. Knocked down by Hetherington. And lifted high in the air by Hickett. And that's going to be an icing call against the Canadians with 1.39 to go. Tonight's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian. Anything for hockey. Canada led 2-0, two and a half minutes into the first period, but down 5-1. The Russians scored three goals in 3-16. Max Dolman with a goal and two assists. And it's white knuckle time in Toronto. Now, Sorokin goes to the Russian bench. 1.39 to go. Oh, the referee, Vinneberg, told them too late. Too late. Sending the goaltender back to the bench. Or back to the net, rather. So Soroka now halfway. Goji for the face-off against Barbashev. Wins the draw. Hickets to the boards, but not up. Pagan swats it back in deep. Soroka hasn't moved yet. Now he is. Lashenko feeds it back. Pagan shoots. That's blocked. Lazar with time. Lifts up to the line and out. Now trying to poke it ahead. Lashenko winds in. The plays are laid offside. The Russians have to tag back up. Hickets has lots of time now. Really good play by Joe Hickett. Calmly holding the puck. Hetherington knocks it down to the Russian zone. Icing waved off as Reinhardt gets there first. The Russian net is empty. Reinhardt swings it across to Clary and shoots. That's blocked by Uden. And now Kamenev gets it across to Butchnevich. Under a minute to go in the third period. Lashenko in. Sends it on goal. It's tipped wide by Pagan. Barbashev. Dicks for it. Theodore gets to it, but he's on his back yet. Can't clear it out. Bouncing puck. Knocked down the ice by Domi. It's skipping towards the goal. It goes wide. And there's an icing call with 38 seconds to go. And the face-off right back down to the Canadian zone. Both teams are exhausted here. Reinhardt finds Duclair. What a block by Uden here to save the game. The possibility of a tie for the Russians. The Russians have basically called an unofficial timeout. They've scuttled the quick faceoff as they're slowly coming to the circle. So now it'll be Reinhardt for the draw against Kamenev with 38 seconds to go. Reinhardt wins it back. Nurse around for Duclair. Chips it ahead. Here comes Domi. Here comes Egan. Trying to hook it ahead. Duclair's on it now. Duclair to Domi. He shot it wide of the goal. 25 seconds to go in the period. Time for one more rush. Push damage. Up ahead to go Domi. Centers it. Tolchinski headed in behind him. Tolchinski spins back in the corner. Centers it. There's a chance. Push damage didn't pull the trigger. Now he does. So Kelly makes the save. Duclair centers it down. Another icing call, 8.1 seconds to go. And the face-off back in the Canadian zone. The Canadians are arguing that the Russians touched it. Look at this dangerous opportunity in the middle of the ice. An overpass as Valley have had it. He passed it once. Now Canada is exhausted here. The same group on the ice, Sam Reinhardt on the draw. He'll be against the Russians' best man in Barbashov. Eight seconds left. They scramble the face off. Reinhardt falls. Valiev shoots the tally. Makes the save. 3.9 seconds to go. And the Russians say that they got to check the clock to see how much time was on it. Rock solid save for Zach Fukali. They lose the draw. Valiev snaps it. At Bukali, who grabs it and holds it. Reinhardt against Barbashev. 3.9 seconds left. Wins the draw to the boards. And Taylor's going to win it. It's World Junior Gold in Toronto. to capture goal for the first time since 2009. Have you ever seen anything like it?
What an unbelievable hockey game from the very first shift. 23 seconds in Canada led. The Russians are flailing around down 5-1, then it's 5-4. Gord, we've seen some unbelievable hockey in this tournament. This was incredible. And those Canadian parents can finally take a breath. Paul Reinhardt there, his son took the key draws down the stretch. Look at the crowd indeed. And for Russia, it'll be a silver medal. But they fought right to the end. A game worthy of the title Canada-Russia. Let's go down to ice level with Ryan Rashad. Gord, thank you with Canadian captain Curtis Lazar. Describe the feeling when Russia scored those three goals to draw themselves right back within striking distance. All I can say is that's hockey. I mean, what, what an effort by them. I mean, they didn't quit. We had us on our heels, but tic-tac-toe, baby. We called that timeout. That's all that was said, and we got the job done. Curtis, it seemed like there was absolutely no trying to protect that one goal lead in the third period. You were going great guns at it. Just describe the pace and the intensity of that period. It was intense. I mean, our fans there behind us the entire way. When we had the legs there. We got a little sketchier of the icing calls at the end. It doesn't matter now. Canada's back on top of the world. I know after the second period of the semifinal, you had some words with your teammates, talked about the need to grab the moment. Did you speak tonight after two? I mean, everyone stepped up in the second intermission. I mean, if anyone said, yo, we'd be up one going to the third against the Russians in the finals, we'd take it any day of the week. We're able to close it out, man. What a feeling. How does this feel? Canadian gold in Toronto. The streak is broken. It's, it's good to be back on top. I mean, said win here on home soil. I mean, great job by the guys. And I mean, let's go celebrate. Go celebrate, Curtis. Thanks. Thank you. You heard Lazar say tic tac tow early in training camp. Benoit Grew, the Canadian coach, misspoke. He meant to say tic tac toe. It said tic tac tow. It became kind of a rallying cry for the team, a way to lighten up the group. They put it in pump-up videos, put it on T-shirts, and now Canada has won gold at the World Junior Championship, the 16th gold medal since this became an official IHF tournament in 1977. And now, the post-game presentations. World Junior Championship. The 2015 WIHF World Junior Championship is proud to be supported by premier marketing partners Esso, Nike, RBC, TELUS, and RDS, TSN, our host broadcaster. Mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue à la présentation de la médaille du championnat mondial junior 2015 de l'IIHF. Le championnat mondial junior 2015 de l'IIHF est fier d'être appuyé par les partenaires premiers ESSO, Nike, RBC, TELUS et les diffuseurs officiels TSN, RDS. Please welcome the following dignitaries who will participate in tonight's award ceremony. S'il vous plaît, accueillez les dignitaires suivants qui participeront à la cérémonie. Representing the premier sponsors from TELUS, David Fuller, President, Consumer Solutions. From the Organizing Committee, Executive Director, Pat McElhenney. Representing TSO, Managing Director of TSO Canada, Rick Ostrom. From the International Ice Hockey Federation, Mr. Frank Gonzalez, IIHF Council Member and Tournament Chairman. Luc Tardif, IIHF Council Member and President of the French Ice Hockey Association. Vladislav Tretsiak, IIHF Council Member and President of the Russian Ice Hockey Association. René Fassel, President of the International Ice Hockey Federation. From the Government of Canada, the Honorable Paul Gasol, Minister of State for Sport, and representing Hockey Canada, Chairman of the Hockey Canada Board of Directors, Joe Drago. We will now present the Player of the Game Awards. The Players of the Game will be presented by David Fuller from TELUS. Les joueurs du match seront présentés par David Fuller de TELUS. Tonight's Player of the Game for Russia. Le joueur du match pour la Russie, number 22, le numéro 22, Ivan Barbashev. Tonight's player of the game for Team Canada, le joueur du match pour le Canada, 
Number 25, Lenville Vincent, Darnell Nurse. What a babbler he was. In the second and third period, there's his dad, Richard, a former CFL player. Gord, I want to say that's the best period of hockey I've ever seen Darnell Nurse play. He defended with ferocity. He never let Durgachev, the huge forward, get players. to the front of the net. Selected. We'll receive a By the way, watch. Nurse and Theodore were not on the ice Checking for an even strength goal against in, in the tournament. Check to our in Montpetit-Tissot. Here to present the top three players for tonight's teams is Rick Ostrom from Tiso, Canada. The top three players for Team Russia, les trois meilleurs joueurs de la Russie. Number 30, le numéro 3, Igor Shestyorkin. Number 6, le numéro 6, Vladislav Gavrikov. And number 23, le numéro 23, Alexander Sherov. What a disappointment for Shestyorkin who got yanked in the early stages of the game after giving up two goals. So Canada runs a clean sheet, goes 7 0 to win it. Now the top three players for Team Canada. Les trois meilleurs joueurs du Canada. Number 23, le numéro 23, Sam Reinhardt. Number 16, le numéro 16, Max Jones. And number 25, le numéro 25, Darnell Nurse. By the way, a three-way tie for the tournament point lead, Reinhardt, Patana, McDavid for Canada. <laughs> now time for the directorate awards. That's the top goaltender forward and defenseman voted on by the directorate that's the team officials the director has selected the best goaltender best defenseman and best forward of the tournament each player will receive a special medallion from the international Ho ice hockey federation the team du tournoi ont déterminé le meilleur gardien le meilleur défenseur et le meilleur attaquant du tournoi chaque joueur recevra un médaillon spécial de la fédération internationale de hockey sur glace the best goaltender of the tournament is Le Gardien du Tournoi A from Slovakia, de la Slovakia, number 30, le numéro 30, Dennis Goldman. That's a popular choice here. Well, the best goaltender of the tournament. The best goaltender of the tournament from Russia, de la Russie, number 6, le numéro 6, Vladislav Gavrikov. Boy, was he good. I have no idea how he's not drafted, Gordon. Went, what a tournament he had. Went through last year's draft. And the best forward of the tournament, the man at the Council Tournoi, from Team Canada, to Canada, number 16, the new size, Max Domi. Now to present the officials from today's game with the trophy recognizing their involvement in tonight's game is Rene Fassel. He's here to present the official match with the medal for participation in the match this evening, Rene Fassel. Boy, Fair Burn and Burley earned it tonight. That was a tough game to officiate, and they did a pretty good job. This is the best officiated tournament, Gord, that I've seen at the World Juniors in the four years that I've been doing it, start to finish. Thank you. You're not going to love all the calls, but these guys and their crews were very consistent. I thought they did a terrific job. Nick Deptif and Vladislav Tretiak will now present the silver medals to Team Russia. Les médailles d'argent seront remises à l'équipe de la Russie par Luc Tartif et Vladislav Tretiak. So the Russians win a medal for the fifth consecutive year. They've never won six in a row. They've got that chance in Helsinki next year. And they receive them from Vladislav Tretiak.
Gord, a few hours ago we saw the bronze medals handed out to Slovakia and how happy they were to receive them. You mentioned at the time you lose the silver medal and you're never thrilled to get it, but you'll be proud of it sometime as the Russians now move on from the medals to shake hands with the Canadians standing at the other blue line. And there's some teammates in there, Valiev and Reinhardt play together in Kootenay. Kolchinsky and Nurse play together in Sault Ste. Marie. Canada and Russia just can't play an uninteresting game. so much going on back in their home country you wonder how the minds of the Russian players are drifting back to their junior league whose very existence is in question the KHL is in doubt and Kloczynski gives nurse a hug just a fabulous night of hockey that was so good so exciting so fun to be here and to watch this and the capper still to come gold medals and then oh canada it was in 1982 that the program of excellence began for hockey canada when the first true national junior teams were formed and that year in rochester minnesota they didn't have a copy of the canadian anthem so the players sang it themselves in an image that remains fresh in the minds of canadian hockey fans Dragon giving his Canadian counterpart Benoit Gru a hug. Gru was supposed to coach the 09 team in Ottawa, took a job with Rochester of the American League instead. So passed up that chance to late Pat Quinn took over and let Canada the gold. Now six years later, Gru has his gold medal. He punched a lot of the right buttons, moving the lines around. Getting a feel, putting Patan with McDavid. And Lazar in the semi-final games to the hat trick did a very, very commendable job. Gonzalez, would Vladislav Gavrikov please come forward to accept the award? So the second place award goes to the Russians as Gavrikov comes to get it. The eighth all-time meeting between Canada and Russia at the World Junior in the gold medal game. Square at four wins apiece. The gold medals will now be presented to Team Canada by Frank Gonzalez, Joe Franklin, and Bob Gonzalez. Maybe not all, some of them are at Team Canada by Frank Gonzalez, Joe Franklin, and Bob Gasol. Joe Higgins from Kamloops, BC steps up. Frederick Gauthier from Astouche, Quebec. Lawson Krause from Mount Bridges, Ontario. Jake Furtanen, Abbotsford, BC. Darnell Nurse from Hamilton. Nick Ritchie from Orangeville, Ontario. Curtis Lazar from Vernon, BC. Eric Comrie from Edmondson. Zach Fucali from Rosemere, Quebec. Robbie Fabry from Mississauga on crutches. Sam Reinhardt from Vancouver. Nick Patan from Delta, B.C. Anthony DeClaire from Laval, Quebec. Josh Morrissey from Calgary, Alberta. Addison Bowie from Winnipeg. Nick Paul from Mississauga, Ontario. Shea Theodore from Alder Grove, B.C. Dylan Hetherington from Calgary. Braden Point from Calgary. Connor McDavid from Newmarket, Ontario. Sam Moran from Saint Henri, Quebec, and Max Domi from right here in Toronto. And then the coaches, Benoit Gru and his staff, Dave Lowry, Scott Walker, Anna Raymond, and Bruce Hamilton, part of the management staff, the owner of the Kelowna Rockets, who are the top team in the Western League, Sean Burke. 
decorated Canadian goaltender. So much goes into this. The summer evaluation camp takes place in August. You have the exhibition series for October, November. The selection camp in December. And the tournament itself. And by the end, you can scarcely remember the beginning. The gold medal team will receive the IIHF Championship Trophy as the 2015 IIHF World Junior Champions. L'équipe médaille d'or recevra le trophée de l'IIHF à titre de champion du tournoi mondial de hockey junior 2015 de l'IIHF. Presenting the IIHF Championship Trophy to Team Canada. And Team Canada's captain is Rene Fassel. We would ask the team captain Curtis Lazar, please come forward to accept the IIHF Championship Trophy. Curtis Lazar, who began the year with the Ottawa Senators, a dream for him to play in the NHL as a 19-year-old, but he desperately wanted to come back here. And now, he's a World Junior Champion. And the first guy to get it from him is Robbie Fabry. Claire will go back to the NHL with the New York Rangers when this is over. Josh Morris, he's got a new team. He was traded from Prince Albert to Kelowna. Hasn't been there yet. Please welcome Frank Gonzalez to officially close the 2015 IIHF World Junior Championship. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Montreal. Thank you, Toronto, for a beautiful championship. I would like to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank Hockey Canada in the organizing committee, and by all means, the volunteers. The volunteers, please. Also, thank the Canadian Armed Forces, security and police officers on this Christmas Day. On behalf of the International Ice Hockey Federation and its president, Mr. René Patel, I hereby declare the 2015 IIHF Junior World Championship close. Thank you. And now there's one more business. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the National Anthem of Canada. Mesdames and Messieurs, may you come in and bring us around to Canada. for the official team photo when the team is named, but this is the one they really want with the trophy when the tournament's over. Last 
camera shot. We'll talk to a couple of players on the ice in a moment once they pose for the photo. By the way, Canada will go to a tough group next year with Sweden and the United States. The tournament's held in Helsinki. It's done according to finish. Now they got to figure out which way to point. We'll turn around three or four times. We'll get it right. A well-organized group. They talked about chemistry, Ray, right from the start. There's Connor McDavid. Played two World Juniors. Likely won't get a shot in the third. He'll be in the National Hockey League next season. They stayed on such an even keel, Gord. It was really impressive. I thought they picked a more skilled team this year. They skated better. They attacked from almost three of the four lines on a consistent basis they defended well they got good goaltending it was a an outstanding effort from the pick of the team to the deliverance of the gold medal 12 of these players won gold with canada at the ivan Holinka summer tournament in 2012 the core of this team is really the core of that group captained by sam reinhardt Let's go back down to Ryan Rashad standing by with Max Doby. Lord, thank you very much, Max. That game had to be so tension filled on the bench. Just describe the emotions you were going through through that second and third period. Yeah, you know what? That was obviously awesome. It was huge, and uh, we've been working a long time for that. So, I mean, we're all proud of each other, and we've been working for a long time. So, this feels pretty good right now. Benoit Group called a timeout when things were starting to sway Russia's way. What was his tone on the bench? What did he say? Yeah, you know what? You just said play our game. We're in control right now, and if you would have said we were winning by one goal going to the third, we would have taken it. So, I mean, we just buckled down, and, and every single guy in that room bought it from day one, and we worked hard every shift, every practice, every game, and we all deserved it. You ran the halls of this building as a child. Now you celebrate as a champion on the ice. What does that feel like? This is unbelievable. I mean, the fans in Montreal and Toronto have been huge, and they're just as part of much of the team as anyone right now. Max, thank you. Thanks, Ryan. He's right here. And Darnell Nurse with Ryan. Gord, thank you, Darnell. There was a shift in that third period. You were battling behind the net for about 15 or 20 seconds, trying desperately to win the battle and not take a penalty. What was that like? Uh, I just tried to go out there and move my feet as much as possible and you know, make a good play on the puck. And you know, fortunately, he, came, he cut back and I was able to get a, a piece of Can you describe what it's like in a game that intense against a rival that hated what it's like to try and walk that fine line between discipline and good decisions. Yeah, uh, we, we, you know, we found a way to, to get through our penalty trouble, but uh, you no, know, it's good there in the third period. We stayed out of all the crap, and you know, this is an unbelievable feeling, and it's uh, well deserved for all the guys. Darnell, I know you desperately wanted the chance to try and to play for Canada last year, and you weren't given that opportunity. How much did that fuel you to get to here in this moment? Yeah, I think it, it fueled me a little bit at the beginning of the season, but I mean, you get here and it all of a sudden becomes, you know, playing for these 22 guys here, and uh, I couldn't be happier and then luckier to be a part of this team. I have to ask you about your head coach, Benoit Grew, the tone that he set through the tournament. Did he just have a way of keeping things calm? Tic-tac-tow, baby, tic-tac-tow. That was very much the anthem. How much was that said today? Uh, once uh, in the period just to calm us down and uh, unbelievable coach and we were real fortunate to have him. So he said it on the bench? He sure did. That's classic. Darnell, thanks for this. Go celebrate. Thank you. Zach Fukali has a gold medal for Canada. Hands off to Frederick Goche. Let's go to Connor McDavid with Ryan Rashad. Gord, thank you. Connor, can you just describe what it feels like to stand on this ice in this city as a gold medalist? Uh, you can't really explain it. It's unbelievable. Uh, I lost to words. It's unbelievable. It seemed like your confidence grew almost game to game, Connor. How much did the way you felt change from the start of the tournament to tonight? I felt a lot better as the, as the tournament went on. Um, it doesn't really matter, though. The team played great and no world champions today. Describe the bond that developed between yourself and, and Curtis Lazar, your captain. I know you roomed together. He was always the guy trying to get you to smile throughout the tournament. What's that relationship like now? It's been great. Um, you know, he's been, a, he's been a great captain. He's been a great roommate. And uh, I mean, I've had so much fun, you know, just being around him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's going to be an interesting next few months for you, Connor. Enjoy tonight. Thanks a lot. Gordon. 
So the celebration rolls on as Canada has gold for the first time since 2009. And they earned every bit of it. What a night in Toronto to cap off a tremendous 2015 World Junior. The celebration rolls on and so does our coverage from Toronto. This is the 2015 World Junior Hockey Championship, TSN's 25th. Our coverage continues in a moment. The 2015 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship is brought to you by RBC. Proud to support hockey in Canada to help more kids reach their someday. By Imperial Oil. The Esso brand is a proud sponsor of Hockey Canada and the World Junior Hockey Championship. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey teams. And by TELUS, the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game. James Duffy back with you. Curtis Lazar with the Canadian flag and a gold medal around his neck. Every move the coach made during this tournament worked out. Benoit grew. A victorious one with Ryan Rashad. Ben, while you called the timeout as Russia was starting to take momentum back, in that moment, what was your message to the team? Well, you know what? It's only a matter of relaxing. We're still early in the game, late in the second period. But you know, it was a matter of calming everybody down and make sure that, you know what? It's still 5 4 for us. And we know that, and we played a right win the third period. Darnell Nurse said you had one tic-tac-toe for the group. Is that what it was? Well, you, you know what? We we talk about this like it was a, a fun sentence. So I use in the practice one day, and they all laugh. And uh, since then, it's been like our our favorite words in the room, tic-tac-toe. And they told me it's relaxed, so I use it, uh, obviously, tonight. What are you most proud of with this group of young men? And well, you know what? I'm proud of all of them, obviously. It's been uh, an incredible ride for us, the coaches, and not only with the players, but, uh, you know, with the staff. I thought we had a vision. We had a, a plan in place. But you need world-class player to accomplish that. And this is what we had. And you know what? My hats off to them. They were unbelievable from day one and they deserve it big time tonight. And well, congratulations on a gold medal. Thank you. Thank you. And what a job by his staff. And that plan he talked about executed to perfection. Canada wins gold. They go undefeated. They never trail the entire tournament. Back to wrap up after this. The 2015 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Molson Canadian. Anything for hockey. And by Canadian Tire Jumpstart Charities. Giving kids a sporting chance. The World Junior is done, but hockey not done on TSN. We get right back at it. Sends and Flyers on TSN 5 Tuesday. Sends and Avs on Thursday. In the Jets region, you can see the Jets and Coyotes, 7.30 Central Time on TSN 3 Thursday. And the Toronto Maple Leafs back at it against the Columbus Blue Jackets Friday night, 7 o'clock Eastern on TSN 4. The celebration has moved from the ice into the dressing room for Team Canada. They have to enjoy every moment because as soon as tomorrow morning comes, they're back to their junior teams across the country, back to being opponents and adversaries. But tonight, a night they will never forget as they break a five-year gold medal drought, beating Russia here in Toronto. And lots more of that coverage just ahead on SportsCenter. This has been a very special year for us here at TSN, our 25th World Junior Hockey Championship. We call it a silver anniversary, but that doesn't really work. It's pure gold tonight. Every one of them has been a true pleasure. We thank our crew who gives up their holidays every single year, and they work way harder than Bob and I do. And we thank you for spending some of your holidays with us. We will see you next year from Helsinki as Canada tries to start a new golden streak. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good night from Toronto. Toronto. What more could you ask for? Canada and Russia. Dolly centers it to Kreskov. We've seen this before. If what was a 5-1 lead is now 5-4. In one of the greatest gold medal games ever played.